for the 96th consecutive time. RFK Stadium is sold out. As today, the Washington Redskins with a 6-4 and four record play host to the St. Louis Cardinals, who are 3-7. and seven. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, along with Sonny Jurgensen. And the Washington Redskins have lost two in a row. Last year, you might recall, they lost five of their last six games, and they folded up. They come in here with good success against the Cardinals. They've won six of their last seven. But fullback John Riggins, son, he probably summed it up best when he said, if we don't win today, our playoff hopes go up in smoke. I think having experienced a letdown at the end of last season is going to help the Redskins in their last six games. There's no question. They're not an overpowering football team. They have to be hitting on all cylinders to be successful, or they can be very bad at times. On the other hand, with the balance in the National Football Conference with six games left, the division titles aren't sewed up, and neither is the wild card. As a matter of fact, mathematically, the Cardinals still have a chance. The Cardinals last week rolled up 325 yards on the ground. That's a record for them. They broke a three-game losing streak, and they have renewed confidence as they come in here. I would think that uh, they should have, uh, after playing Minnesota the way they did, I would think one thing, Gary, that uh, going into the last six games, they can be spoilers. And I think it, they have to end their season on a positive note because it's going to have a lot to do with the future of the Cardinal football program. The Washington Redskins have won the toss. They've elected to receive. As Steve Little, you're looking at him, number 12 will be kicking off. Ike Forte is the middle man. He's back inside the five. There's Forte. He'll be running kickoffs back because Buddy Hardiman is out with a broken jaw. Little approaches the football, and it's underway. This is Forte from the goal line. Last week, he averaged 31 yards a return from the kickoff department. He's across the 15 to the 20 and jumped out of bounds. Ken Green knocks him out, and now let's set offensively this Washington Redskin team. John Riggins, boy, he's having a super year. Benny Malone at the other running back. The wide receivers, Bugs, Warren, the rookie from San Diego State, who's been starting the last five games. He has. Gene Fugis ready, but Warren's doing a good job, and we'll start. And that offensive line, it stayed healthy this year. It has. That's been a big success of the Washington Redskins, keeping them healthy. And Joe Theismann, who's ranked third in the NFC, is the quarterback. From the 20-yard line in motion, that's Ricky Thompson. <laughs> this is John Riggins, and Riggins to the 22-yard line. And let's set defensively now the football Cardinals, ranked fourth overall. You see Dawson and Pollard. Pollard playing very well this year. Six sacks already, a uh, good football player. Now, you have some changes in that linebacking core, but Calvin Favron, they really like him, the young rookie. And Jack Party is high on the bare field, too. They think he's a fine linebacker. And what a game Roger Worley had last week. He turned that game around with an interception for a touchdown. Thompson McDaniel, the wide receiver. Second down and seven for Washington. Again to Riggins again. And Riggins finds a lot of congestion. Moves the ball just short of the 25-yard line. Charlie Davis made the tackle. I think we have one change in the secondary of the Cardinals. Perry Smith is starting at one corner in place of Carl Allen. Perry Smith played very well last week. As an end result, he was promoted to that starting off or defensive cornerback spot. He has one interception this year. So it will bring up still third down, six yards to go. Clarence Harmon has come in now in a parent passing situation. We'll see that all the game. Harmon and Riggins alternating at the fullback spot. Forte remains in the backfield with Harmon. <laughs> Theismann with time overthrows Danny Bugs at the 40-yard line. Theismann had good protection. First indication of how much problem it is going to be throwing the football. The ball got away from Joe. He just, the ball kind of slipped out of his hand on release. It was an overthrow. That's Mike Bragg going back to kick. It has been raining off and on. This is prescription athletic turf. It's a remarkable field from the standpoint they have suction pumps that will siphon the water off the top. And right now, it looks to be in excellent shape. But the rain, of course, will affect the football. Willard Harrell is back for this kick from Bragg. Bragg comes in here with a 38.4 average. Hits it high. Harrell falls for the fair catch and gets away from it. It takes a cardinal bounce to the Redskin 48-yard line where Neil Olkowitz comes up and downs it at that point. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins of the National Football League is prohibited. Let's check now the Cardinal offensive team as they'll come up there. We have a change. Bob Young is not going to start. 
Young is having a great deal of difficulty with a hamstring. The end result, George Collins will be going in place of him. Pat Tilly in motion, play action, first pass of the game for Jim Hart. He delivers it to Wayne Morris, and Morris across the 40, close to the first down. Brad Dusick over there to make the stop. Checking the rest of that offense, Morris will be in the starting backfield along with Otis Anderson, who's second in the NFL in rushing. And he's going to have to hold on to that football today as many times as he carries this thing, Gary. And the quarterback, of course, is Jim Hart, who in the first game this year threw for 306 yards against Washington. Keith Wartman is playing. There was some concern about him. He played only one down last week against Minnesota because of an ankle injury, but he is in there at left tackle going against Coy Bacon. He did a good job in the first game against Coy also. Second down, a short yard. Otis Anderson waiting for a block. Cuts it for the first down. Good patience that time by Anderson. Pete Wysocki over to make the tackle. Right, Terry Steve made an excellent pull here and uh, made a good block on this. Watch number 68 pulling out of your offensive line. Something the Cardinals have been known for for a lot of years and that's good offensive line play you see the block there on Kenny Houston allows Anderson to pick up the first down good field position for the Cardinals seven yard gain you notice how he put that ball away he was very careful with it wasn't it yes, he was Anderson has fumbled once in the last six games this is again to Morris and Morris inside the 30 yard line to the 29 Dave Butts making the tackle this Washington team against the rush is ranked eight they're giving up 141 yards a game, and the Cardinals feel the success today hinges on their establishing that running game. And staying even, they don't want to fall behind the Redskins. The Redskins have not been a good come-from-behind football team. If they can stay even with them or get a lead on them, they force the Redskins to do things they don't like to. Second down seven, Pat Tilly and Mel Gray split to the bottom of the screen. Anderson trying to go wide, gets away from Ken Houston. He's to the 25 to the 20-yard line for the first down. Excellent outside speed that time by Otis Anderson. Brad Dusick ran him out. Well, he made a good move because he went outside of the blocking, the blocking, the, the, trying to force him to cut back in. He just outran the pursuit. Ten-yard pickup. Boy, he just left him Houston back there. Let's look at it again. You can see where the play looks like it's designed to cut back in. Morris leading actually blocks out on Kenny Houston, but you see where Anderson, his great running ability, just goes outside of the, the blocking. They feel if Anderson can carry the ball 20 times today, they can win this football game. From the 20, first down. St. Louis just underway, no score. Mel Gray in motion. Anderson straight ahead, and he is close to the 15-yard line. Otis Anderson running off the left side. Wysocki making the stop once again. Getting up slowly is Otis. He's had some problems with the leg. In fact, he hurt the leg warming up before the game of Minnesota. <laughs> then he came in and gained 164 yards. I asked him about it down on the field. And I said, how is your thigh? And he says, it's okay. It's recovered. Uh, having no problem with it right now. Change in the secondary. Tony Peters comes in. Ken Houston checks out. Second down, six yards to go. Morris to the 10. He fumbled the football. Who has it? Wayne Morris, who's not known to be a fumbler, Let's see who got the football. Looks like St. Louis has recovered it. Looks like George Collins is the man who came up with the football. When you take a look at it, you see the handoff. I think first time this man's from a long time. Loses a handle on the football as Dave Butts comes in and knocks the ball loose. But they retain the football by coming up with the recovery. Richard Osborne, an extra tight end, comes in. Pat Tilly checks out. Last year, you might recall, Morris gained 123 yards against Washington. He carried the ball 36 times, which is a cardinal record. Third down, a long four. Anderson. Anderson to about the 10. That's going to be a yard short of the first down. Lamar Perry really filled well that time for the left cornerback spot. Good. Again, this is just an ad-lib type run. He was trying to go up the middle. You see the play's designed to go inside. But he shows you his ability. He sees a little daylight outside. Goes on outside. Almost picks up the first down. Setting up a fourth in one situation. It looks like the Cardinals will go for it. They are going to go for it. This is the eighth play of this drive that started at the Washington 47-yard line. And Jim Hart's going to call timeout. So the Cardinals use their first to three timeouts. They had Theotis Brown in the lineup. They would have had a full house backfield. 
And so, time is out at the 10.05 mark of quarter number one. The Cardinals moving the football. They have a big decision when we come back. Okay, men. When we see the ambassador's Mercedes, we roll. The surprisingly affordable Granada, sometimes mistaken for a Mercedes. There he is. Roll. Albert, are you speeding? No, dear. People in Washington sure are friendly. I think they like our new Granada. Are you sure this is the way to the Applebaum's new house? I hope so. Oh, look, Albert. They bought a Colonial. The 1980 Ford Granada, a modern American classic. This Christmas, thrill the kids with exciting computer cam toys from Radio Shack. A great gift idea for boys and girls. Comes with changeable cams for six different driving maneuvers. Straight, zigzag, circle, square, and more. Action-packed fun, battery-powered safe, and they're gift-priced. The Radio Shack truck, just $5.99, and the racer, only $4.99. Detailed replicas of the real thing. Keep them trucking with the computer cam truck and racer. Only at Radio Shack. Well, Sonny, a big decision for the Cardinals. They have elected to go for it on fourth and one. And I, I probably feel right now, Gary, that they're going for it because they don't feel that a, a field goal is going to be all the points scored in this football game. There's Bud Wilkinson looking on a tense moment for this Cardinal team. Their first series that started at the 47. Mel Gray in motion. Oh, Anderson. Anderson is going to get the first down and then some. Anderson fumbled the football. Who has it? Washington may have recovered. Washington indicating they did. We still don't have an official confirmation of that. Wait a minute. And they now indicated, I believe, Ben Bright, the official, hasn't indicated yet. Lamar Parrish is over there. And Washington has the football, I guess. Washington's indicating that they have the football. The decision has to be whether or not he was down before he fumbled. Ben Bright's going to explain this to us. Defense recovered a ball in the end zone at the touchback. So that'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And that's what we talked about earlier, the turnovers. The turnovers that plagued him throughout the year, the seventh straight game at each fumble after picking up a fourth down, first down to go, first and goal to go. Watch where he fumbles it right here. Ball is knocked loose. It is out on the ground before he was down. At the start of the show, we said that the Redskins felt they could make Anderson fumble. They did. Gentlemen, gentlemen, tonight we're brought together here by two dudes we all love. Good food yeah. and right beer from Miller. Yeah. And I want to tell, tell you this Ronnie, opportunity give myself me the to tell you. I tell you, I don't have no respect. Gaston, what is it? Meatloaf sandwich and a light. Gentlemen, we all know and appreciate, light has one-third less calories than a regular beer, and it's less filling. But the best thing is, it tastes great. Less filling. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Hey, Deacon, pass the roll. Hey, Charlie, that's my beer. No, this is by your broccoli. This is my broccoli. That's my beer. What's wrong with you guys? Hey, Bubba, you want the peas? You gonna eat all that? Just showing off. Gentlemen, in closing, I'd like to think I speak for all of us, but I say if it wasn't for light, I wouldn't be where I am today. Hey, you buffoon! Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Wednesday, CBS presents a special three-hour motion picture event starring Richard Thomas, Ernest Borgnine, and Patricia Neal. All quiet on the Western Front. Wednesday. Well, the Cardinals have just committed their 31st turnover of 1979. A very costly one here. Two fumbles in that opening drive for them. And uh, something they can't afford to do if they expect to beat the Washington Redskins. The Redskins feel they can produce the turnovers as they did in the first game this year. Thighs them back to throw to Don Warren, the big tight end. Ken Green wrestles him down. And Warren is very close to the first down. For Warren, that's his 13th catch of the year. And let's check some other action in the National Football League. Detroit. First hey. quarter score. Bo Robinson ran one in from six yards to give Detroit the lead in the first quarter. Tampa Bay lost one last week. And look at this game. Houston. Earl Campbell, a one-yard run. Houston trying to come back from that Monday night win. And Cincinnati. Pete Johnson, a one-yard run. They have averaged 31 points a game in the last four they played. Harmon now has joined John Riggins in the backfield. 
This is Riggins, and Riggins to the 35 for the first down run. Kurt Allerman made the tackle, and Washington establishing that running game. We'll see a lot of Harmon in duo with Riggins due to the injury to Hardeman. Good blocking by the left side of the line. Terry Hermeling and Ron Saul, Bob Cusill, the center. Gave him a little daylight. Good power running by John Riggins. Six yards. You know, he came in here. He only needed 11 yards to pass Floyd Little, the all-time rushing list. He now is tied with him after that last run. This is Kenny Malone. Malone to the 40. Malone to the 42-yard line. Malone has only averaged 2.7 per carry, which is the lowest average for a starting back in the NFL. Did a pretty good job on that play. Good, strong, tough runner. Now you can see his toughness every time he, he carries the football. Uh, sure, he only has 331 yards. He has scored three touchdowns, and he's a good blocker. This team, Washington's not scoring a lot of points. They're averaging 17.8. There's only one other team, by the way, that's above 500 that's scoring fewer points. That's Denver. They're averaging just over 14 a game. Thompson above the wide receivers. Riggins has a first down. He fumbles the football. Washington's on it. That's Warren, Don Warren. Both these teams are having a tough time hanging on. It's not raining hard, but it's a mist, and it's making that football elusive. This is the third fumble we've had in the game so far. Washington has come up with two of them. Very alertly here, Don Warren's right in the right place at the right time. Kenny Green forced that fumble. He and John Fairfield. And you see Warren leap on it. That's a hard drill to do to recover a fumble. Ron Jankowski now has come in defensively, replacing Bob Pollard. Riggins now has moved ahead of Floyd Little, the all-time rushing list, 11th now, with that last effort. And now Theismann on a first down. Pressure put on by Fairfield. Fairfield giving chase to Theismann. He's to the 45 and out of bounds. And that is what Theismann does so well. He's gained 112 yards rushing this year. Take a look at John Riggins here. After this, on this block, as Theismann goes back, Fairfield comes on the blitz. He makes a good block here. But Fairfield's behind Theismann. He feels him. Now Riggins goes and picks up somebody else. That's good hustle. Good, good hustle. Boy, he cut Ron Yankowski down with quite a block. A gain of five, second and five from the 45. Harmon and Riggins now in the running backfield for Jack Pardee's crew. They're six and four, and they'd like to break a two-game losing streak here today. Heisman on the delay to Harmon. Harmon is close to that first down at the 40. One of the most underrated backs maybe in the NFL, Clarence Harmon. Dawson with a tackle. Have a score to check on. Pittsburgh playing in Kansas City. First quarter score. A flea flicker from Terry Bradshaw to Franco Harris. 66 yards. No, it's 26 yard pass to John Stallworth for the touchdown. Boy, is Pittsburgh playing well. Boy, that's bad. They're so strong when they have to revert to gimmicks to win. <laughs> they don't have to do that. Maybe they just wanted to drive the boredom out of their attack, huh? Maybe so. You can see they just missed the first down. It'll bring up a third down for Washington. Danny Bugs is going to come out. And Fred Dean will check in. He'll come out, actually line up as a tight end, but they get him in there for blocking purposes. Third down, less than a yard to go. We have 6.57 remaining in this first quarter. If you just joined us, the Cardinals took the opening series, marched down, and fumbled the ball into the end zone. And now Washington's headed back the other way. Harmon and Riggins, the running backs, along with Benny Malone. Theismann! And what happened on that play? Quarterback sneak. Yeah, but it looked like he had a little trouble with the football. Maybe not. He may have. He was, had a lot of poise and just keeping his, his sense to, to go straight ahead with the football. He may have had a little trouble with his exchange. Let's look at it. I thought he mishandled it, but maybe I'm seeing things. Let's see. No, he no, has he the ball. I think it was a quarterback sneak. He just kind of waited for something to develop, didn't he? There you go. First down, just like you used to run that sneak. <laughs> Two times in 18 years. Thompson and Bucks, the wide receivers from the 40. 6.06 to go, first quarter. Theismann. He hits Ricky Thompson at the 25. Thompson stays on his feet to the 15-yard line, to the 10. And 
Thompson is out of bounds at the six-yard line. I want an effort. Roger Worley eventually dropping. Thompson last week had a 35-yard catch against Pittsburgh. He's been slow to the hip pointer, but you wouldn't know it on that play. His 13th, only his 13th catch of the season. Theismann almost came off and went to Riggins. Watch him. He takes a look right here at Riggins. He realizes he's covered. He goes back and finds Thompson on a crossing pattern. He breaks the tackle right here. Kenny Stone can't hold on him. He comes back under Perry Smith, breaks out, picks up a little blocking. Look at Terry Hermeling down there helping on the blocking, and also Danny Bugs finally run out of bounds. 33-yard pickup to go at that 35-yarder of a week ago. First and goal at the seven-yard line. John Riggins to the five. John Riggins for the touchdown. Made that look easy. They did the same play they ran against Pittsburgh last week. A change of blocking scheme a little bit. The short yardage because the Redskins have had problems. And you see right here, good block from uh, the lead back, and also Don Warren made a good block. Well, Warren is active. He was down on that previous play trying to throw a block on that catch by Ricky Thompson. And Mark Mosley, who, by the way, has hit 49 straight PAT attempt this one. He is the only kicker in the NFL that hasn't missed a point after. Heisman to hold. And Mosley hits it right in the middle. And the Washington Redskins at the 546 mark. Move that football 80 yards in nine plays to take the seven and nothing lead as the Cardinals will have the play catch up. Spread your wings. Introducing the new 1980 Thunderbird, a Thunderbird of new contemporary size that shows its elegant heritage wherever you look. And with its new size and a new 4.2 liter engine, this Thunderbird has excellent estimated gas mileage and also offers the first automatic overdrive option built in America, a new engineering breakthrough. The new size Thunderbird, a better idea for the 80s. For every part of your life, Nationwide. At Nationwide Life Insurance, our agents know that when you're just starting out, you can't afford a lot, yet you need thorough protection and something more. Life insurance capable of growing as your responsibilities grow to make sure every member of your family will always be properly protected. Nationwide Life Insurance plans for every part of your life. Nationwide is on your side. When you kick 50 in a row, you have to have some help. And on that last play, Joe Theismann did quite a job. He did. This is, is tough in unconditions like this because the ball is slippery coming back. A little snap low. He kind of bounces on the ground, traps it in front of him, and Mosley stays with it. A lot of times a kicker will lose his poise right then and, and change his steps and end up missing the kick. 50 in a row now for number three. Boy, what a year he is having. Mosley coming in here with 64 points, which is second in the NFC. He's hit 15 of 20 field goals. That's Roy Green and Willard Harrell back for the Cardinal. Boy, he hit that one high, but it's going to be short. Roy Green out across the 25 for 30, and he brings it out to the 40, to the 44-yard line. Roy Green, who is leading the NFC in kickoff returns, Good yardage on that play as Tony Peters up there to eventually make the stop. He's averaging almost 27 yards a return. Well, tonight, start your evening with a brand new edition of 60 Minutes. Then the laps are on the house at Archie Bunker's place. There's more great comedy on one day at a time, followed by Alice and the Jeffersons. Then Pernell Roberts stars as Crapper John, MD. That's on CBS tonight. A good Sunday night lineup. Yes, sir. Wayne Morris, Otis Anderson, the running backs. The Cardinals down 7 to nothing. Wayne Morris protecting the football. Picks up five yards as he moves the ball to the 50-yard line. Neil Okowitz making the tackle. There's Jim's record against Washington. Jim this year has thrown 15 interceptions. That's the most in the NFC, but a lot of reason for the difficulty. Part of it is that chopped-up offensive line he's been playing behind. Well, that's for sure. He, he hasn't had anybody help the... Uh this entire line helped with the entire season. Second down, make it about four yards to go. That's Pat Tilly in motion. Hart with excellent protection. Pat Tilly almost intercepted. Lamar Parrish, who has seven interceptions, almost got his eighth. 
Why people insist upon throwing deep outs against Lamar Parrish, I do not know because he has seven <laughs> interceptions, and you see how close he is right here to eight. He plays it perfectly. The ball hung a little bit on Jimmy. Didn't tough ball to throw under these conditions, and you see Parrish had a better shot at it than Tilly. Lamar Parrish, by the way, with his next interception would have a seasonal high for himself. 1971, he also had seven interceptions. And of course, when he was playing with Cincinnati. Third down now. Hart on a third and four. Trying to hit Anderson, and Anderson is hit by Wysocki. Wysocki timed that very well, and Anderson could not hang on. That'll bring up fourth down. Anderson, by the way, coming in here has 31 catches, which is 14th in the NFC. We have a change in that Oakland-Houston game. Look at this, 7-7. Now, Kenny Stabler hit a uh, touchdown pass to Raymond Chester in that one. Seattle, after having a disastrous Sunday against Los Angeles, they scored. Well, they have a minus seven yards. Cameron Smith made the touchdown in that one. Here's Steve Little. Boy, what a job he's doing punting-wise. 41-yard average. That's fifth best in the NFC. Big rush. He just got that away. Coming up was Clarence Harmon, and Harmon has the ball hit him. It hit him, and I believe, let's see. I Coming think up it, with a Seattle's Brad, it is a Cardinals football. I think it hit the back of the leg of Tony Peters. Let's go back. I'm sure we'll have it on replay, but they will award the football to St. Louis if, in fact, it did hit Harmon. I, if I'm not mistaken. It looked like Peters. The ball came down and hit him on the back of the leg. He, he was not even looking at it. Let's, Let's take look. a look at it. We'll see who, in fact, it does hit. Here's Harmon signaling for it. There's Peters coming through. It hit Peters on the, on the ankle. Tony Peters, Redskin player. It's going to be the Cardinals football. It sure is. I don't see the Redskins make very many mistakes on their special teams. I tell you what, give St Steve Little a lot of credit for getting that punt off. Yes, it is almost blocked. So we have a timeout with 4.40 to go in this first quarter. The Cardinals with a chance now to even things up. America, the world is waiting. Healthy spaces, glowing faces, a life that's full of life. Your world is waiting, and Visa is there. You're traveling, you're moving, you're giving more to life. Wherever life is good, you're making it better. And Visa is there for traveling, shopping, and cash. Visa is the most widely recognized name in the world. Visa, we're keeping up with you. Has built its business on one simple thing trying harder keep on trying america the effort is really everything we keep on trying america and amos we don't give up trying by trying harder we changed an entire industry trying. we're not about to give it up now Next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern on the CBS Sports Spectacular. The action's on the lane and in the water. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Well, the turnovers becoming very important in this game. The Cardinals fumbled in the end zone, and now Clarence Harmon on a mishandled fair catch has turned the ball back over to the Cardinals. They have it first down to the 26. Crowd booing, but really there's no cause for it. And obviously hit a Redskin player. Al Gray in motion. Otis Anderson. Anderson, oh, is he hit by Okowitz. Boy, is he a story this year, number 52. He came out of nowhere. Came in in the second series against the Cleveland Browns. Pete Wysocki also makes an excellent play on this. Linebackers for Washington really doing a good job here. Forcing him back inside, and you see the tackle right there. Number 52, Neil Okowitz a free agent, the first free agent they signed, actually just minutes after the draft had been completed. What an acquisition. Anderson now has 32 yards on six carries. Second down, nine yards to go. Anderson again, Anderson running into difficulty, but look at his resourcefulness to the 20, to the 15. First down inside the 10, first and goal. Mark Murphy made the tackle. He had really no opportunity to make anything, but he converted it into big yardage. He turned a third and 12 situation into a first and goal just with his own athletic ability. Watch this. He is actually hit behind the line of scrimmage. 
right there. Perry Brooks hit him back there, and then you see the mad scramble to get him. Running the daylight, he gets away from Brad Dusick. And finally, they just have to hem and him down around the, the eight-yard line. 17-yard run by Otis Anderson. Coming in here, he needed 76 yards to tie the Cardinal rushing record for a season. This time, Tuck Sweaty. On a first and goal from the nine, Neil Okowitz, number 52, once again was in the hole. Coming in here, he had 1,000 yards. The record for a season for the Cardinals is 1,076 yards held by Jim Otis. And obviously, he's headed on to a new standard before this season's over, if not today. He'll probably set a standard each year he plays. What he's only going to get better. They say he's maturing every week, Gary. Great kid. 4.9 average on each carry. Matt Tilly, no, the wide receivers. Here's Anderson sticking it in again, but not much doing on that one. Dyron Talbert, the veteran who, by the way, hurt his knee against the Cardinals last year in a game here at RFK Stadium, the 12th game of the season. He made the tackle, and it's a third and goal from just outside the five. Boy, he's a fine football player, number 72, Dyron. He's the leader of that defensive unit. He comes out of there. They're making all kinds of wholesale changes right now. They've got everybody running back and forth. They won't even try to set it. Third and goal now. Hart gives to Anderson again. Anderson cuts it up, and he is in for the touchdown, I believe. Now, wait a minute. He's short. The Cardinals thought he was in, and now they're indicating he was short. Boy, looks like he may have lunged across there. It looked like for what effort he had to get down to the goal line. And it did, in fact, look like he broke the plane of it. They may have said he, his knee had touched before. Let's Whoa. take a look at it. Looks like he is hemmed up right here at the line of scrimmage. No place to go. Deucing's got him dead to right right there. Boy, Bacon coming over. Look at that. He just splits it, goes in. Oh, very close. Boy, I guess. Oh, oh, oh. Now, what is it? Fourth and goal at the half-yard line. That could be a very big play. We've got a lot of people here. Jimmy Hart giving to Theotis Brown, and he takes it in easily. Theotis Brown, and you don't think that offensive line didn't open that one up? Heath Wartman, what a job he did. He and Collins on that side. Watch your movement up front. They give it to the big fullback. 6'2", 225-pound rookie from UCLA. Well, for Brown, that's his fifth touchdown of the year. They have such confidence in him as a rookie. They use him on those goal line plays. Steve Little for the point after attempt. Trying to tie it up with the 129 mark. And Steve Little hits it. And so it's 7-7. And we appear to have an excellent football game unfolding here at RFK Stadium. Well, a we game that the Redskins cannot afford to lose. Excuse me, Gary. We, we had two turnovers. The Redskins had to march 80 yards for theirs. And then they had the, the mishandled punt that hit Tony Peters, and uh, he ended up, uh, the Cardinals ended up taking advantage of that. Well, let's look ahead to next Saturday, 4.30 Eastern time, the Memorial World Open Bowling Championship. Our director, Jim Simmel, will be producing that. We'll have live coverage of the finals, the 35th and final tournament of the 1979 PBA Tour. Mark Roth will be there. What about this, the battle of the NFL cheerleaders? Now, who is the host of this thing? Tell me that. Well, the hostess is Jane Kennedy. And who is the host, and how did you get the assignment? I was the only guy <laughs> that they trusted to go down there and do that. 16 teams representing the AFC and NFC compete in an exciting rubber raft race. And also the Mr. Universe Bodybuilding Championship. There'll be highlights televised of that. The top amateur bodybuilders understand the United States is back to defend three of those classes that they won a year ago. I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to speak to your wife, Linda, about that assignment. <laughs> Oh, you're really helping me out today. <laughs> anyway, after that mishandled fair catch, a drive of 26 yards and six plays, and the Otis Brown taking it over from one yard out. Forte is back deep for the Redskins, seven to seven our score. Here's Forte at the four. Forte up to the 27, and he makes it out to the 28-yard line. So both these teams have made crucial turnovers and both of them have been converted into points. As a good result, we're all even. Very short drive, but the drive was all on the legs of Otis Anderson. He turned in a couple of plays that really shouldn't have gone anywhere. Yeah, that second down play, that uh, it would have been set up a third in about 12 or 13 yards, and uh, he turned it into a first and goal. It's raining a little harder right now. Coming down pretty good. 
From the 27, first down, Feisman off to Riggins, and Riggins across the 30 to the 31-yard line. John, who last year had 1,000 yards for the Redskins, has had two 100-yard days against Philadelphia. And a year ago, in the only game he played against the Cardinals, he gained 106 yards. So he has been a very durable, a very excellent player. You can see the conditions of the field. Just taking a look at Jack Pardee there, how wet he was on the sideline. You know, that fumble by Riggins in that first quarter there, which, uh, as we wind down to the end, was his first in 130 carries. So you can see how difficult it is to hang on. Second down, six. And this time, Penny Malone. Brings it to the 38, and that looks like, well, they moved the ball back. I thought he had the first down, but they may be just short of it. John Fairfield making the tackle. It's good hard inside running. You see the strength of a Benny Malone. Good blocking up front. Oh, offensive line up in the middle there doing a fine job. They're going to measure to see if the Redskins did get the football. You know, Washington, Sonny, if there's one thing that's been plaguing them is short yardage plays. Remember that game against the Saints? They had 18 first and goal situations that came away with, I think, a field goal and a touchdown. I think they changed that. They got in against Pittsburgh last week, and the first time down against the Cardinals today, uh, Riggins got in standing up. So they got the first down to the 37-yard line. 17 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Malone, Riggins, a running back. In motion, that's John McDaniel. Riggins cuts to the outside, but Fairfield is there. Helped arrive from Bob Pollard as Bud Wilkinson. What a class man he is in his second year as the director of the football Cardinals. And that's going to be the end of our first quarter of play. So the rain continues to fall here at RFK Stadium. First 15 minutes, we're all even, seven apiece. Guaranteed. Ten months from now, I'll be training in electronics. Guaranteed. Even if you're still in school, you can join the Army now and take up to 12 months to report for duty. With your choice of training, guaranteed in writing. Next September, I'll be in Europe. Guaranteed. This is the Army, and we're giving guarantees. Call this toll-free number now. The car, the 1980 Mustang. The place, Ford's Test Track, Dearborn. Mustang proves itself a sports car for the 80s. The U.S. Auto Club tested Mustang for acceleration, for cornering, for steering response, for braking, for overall driving performance. The result, Mustang is certified by the U.S. Auto Club as a sports car. Sports car performance, impressive fuel economy. That's Ford Mustang, a sports car for the 80s. Next time you wonder what white wine to drink, think of Gallo Rhine. With Sonny Jurgensen, I'm Gary Bender. We're ready now for quarter number two. It's all even at seven. As we have second down nine for the Redskins from their own 38-yard line. Joe Theismann on the second down. Gets it off to Penny Malone. Malone to the 35, to the 40. Going to be short of the first down, but Malone, who they don't throw to all that much, did a pretty good job that time. That's only his 11th catch of the year. Ron Saul did an excellent job getting out in front of him and making a block to free him up, almost picking up a first down. Hey, look at this, would you? You know how they got their second score? It was a 95-yard run with a pass interception by Ray Griffin, Archie Griffin's brother. That is a dangerous team, Cincinnati. They're 2-8, and eight, but they could play have it, couldn't they, with some teams in the stretch drive? They had the same opportunity that the uh, the Cardinals do, being spoilers down these last six games. Third down and four. Ricky Thompson in motion. Weisman on a delay to Harmon. Flag on the play. Harmon gets away from Fat Run. He has a first down as Worley rams him out of bounds. But as we mentioned, there is a flag across the field at the 45-yard line. Nice run by Harmon. Well, he gave him a 
brought back some old days there with two stiff arms, didn't he? John McDaniel indicating against the Cardinals, and it is as Ben Dreith indicates offside. Take a look at this. He just play really not designed to come back this wide. It's not a play designed to go outside. Hey, he's he sees the opening and goes out. Watch it, right here, one side. stiff arm right Define here against Favron, the and then he down. comes over and he, he gives the same thing to Roger Worley. Look at this. Oh, like an uppercut. Boy, they could almost call face masking on the runner, can they? <laughs> well, that was Bob Pollard, the left side defensive end that was offside. Of course, he'll refuse that. They have the first down now at the 49-yard line. Riggins and Benny Malone now in the backfield. McDaniel and Danny Bugs, the wide receivers. 14.05 remaining till halftime. Theismann back. Complete to Malone again. Mavron drops him immediately, but Benny Malone. Now that's a new wrinkle to their offense. Sonny, they just haven't thrown to him all that much. Well, they're throwing when uh, the Cardinals are expecting them to uh, to run the football, and that's that's a good that's a good change up because usually Washington makes a wholesale changes, comes in with their passing unit, but they've lost Buddy Hardiman this week and uh, for the rest of the season it looks like maybe four or five weeks at least. And it's a good change up having to throw the ball to Malone. He can catch it. And Malone stays back there with Riggins. Thompson and Bugs, the wide receivers, pitch to Benny Malone on a second down and seven. And Malone has another first down. Terry Hermelin, the left side tackle, threw quite a block on that play. And Malone took over from there. Watch it. It's coming outside here. You see the pitch back. Play design right here. You see the blocking up front. Good blocking up front by Hermeling on Favron. Oh, a little push. <laughs> Didn't catch you, Terry. <laughs> Ten-yard pickup for Benny Malone. Today, this Cardinal defensive team has played well against the rush this year. They're fourth in the NFC, but right now, Washington's moving the ball. First down at the 38 of St. Louis. Heisman on the first down. Blairs, he's backs out, looks for someone up the field, almost intercepted. That was Kurt Allerman with a chance. A flag has been thrown. Don Warren, the intended receiver, it's holding against Washington, the preliminary call. Heisman did not see Allerman that time, and he tried to split it. Warren came open late. He tried to split the uh, linebackers. Allerman almost picked one off, but we're going to have a penalty on the play. It looks like it's going to be holding uh, against the Washington Redskins. You know, Theismann coming into this Offense game. Offense holding number 74. That's George Stark, all right? Talking about Theismann coming into this game. He's had the flu bug the last couple of days. They did not practice yesterday, and uh, he said he's more relaxed today because of the, the rest he's had than uh, any time this season. See, Mark Arneson now has replaced Calvin Fabron at right defensive linebacker. First down now, 19 yards to go. Like a little movement on the line. Flags go into the air. Beisman spreading up the field. A lot of white shirts. Arneson, and he very, very wisely got out of bounds. Looked like Don Warren, the tight end on the far side, was the guy that moved before the ball was snapped. You know, so much is, is made in, in football about changing the count. They get on the quarterbacks about changing the count so the defense doesn't get the jump on you. But you know who you pull off more than anybody else when you go to a longer count? Your own teammates. Your own teammates are the ones that don't pick it up. Very good point. So penalties now continuing to move the Redskins Illegal back. Illegal motion on the offense, number 85, decline the penalty. That'll be second down. Jim Silman has it on tape. Let's look at it. You see him right tight end, upper part of your screen. Don Warren just jumped a little bit before the count. So they refuse the penalty because it's second down and still 21 yards to go. Ball just across the 50-yard line. Riggins, the fullback, along with Benny Malone. Warren is also flanked out. They have three wide receivers split out now. They give to Malone, and Malone with the 45. They tried to cross him up on that play. Good call. Almost, almost split it, too. Almost split it. Malone almost came free in the secondary. I like Washington's game plan today. They are really keeping the Cardinals guessing out there. There's Malone coming out. This grass surface, by the way, is only the second time the Cardinals have played on natural grass. The other time they just as soon forget about. That was the Los Angeles Coliseum. They lost 21 to nothing. A couple of the scores. Miami leading Baltimore 7 to nothing. Bob Greasy on an 18-yard pass. Pittsburgh leading Kansas City 10 to nothing now. 
They have Forte and Harmon as the running backs on a third down and still 16 yards to go. A scissoring action to Harmon, and Harmon is hit by Perry Smith and drags tacklers to the 35. That'll still be around seven yards short of the first down. And is that close enough now for Mr. Mosley? It'd be a long one, wouldn't it? It's going to be a long one. I think under the conditions with the rain and everything, I think they're going to punt it away and try to put it deep in the territory. Mike Bragg is going in. You see the draw play. Again, calling something that uh, I don't think the Cardinals were quite expecting. But a uh, long way to go for the first down. They were playing it soft. And there's Bragg. He is excellent at kicking him out on the coffin corner. Let's see if he can do it this time. He's angling it there. There's a flag on the play, and that ball is going to make it in for the touchback, but a flag at the 35-yard line. Another mistake by St. Louis. They had too many men on the field. Keith Simons was still trying to get back off the field. He did not make it off before the ball was snapped. Well, let's see what that'll do. That will not give them the first down. They still had nine yards to go, but would it change your play call? No, and would it move Mosley? There was only 10 men on the field. That only made 10. 11. It was all all right. <laughs> That's a good explanation. <laughs> I love it. They ended up <laughs> with only 10. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, anyway, the Cardinals will have the football at the 20-yard line when we return at the 11.45 mark. I'm Cheryl Teague. I feel at home in front of the camera. But behind the camera, I don't know the difference between a lens opening and a Broadway opening. So I rely on my Olympus OM-10. My trusty OM-10 gets great shots automatically. My OM-10 has the smart little red light that tells me when it's okay to shoot. Oh, it's okay to shoot. Hold it, fellas! With Olympus OM-10, great shots automatically. Super automotive values from Sears. Now get the full power of the Sears 48 battery for a full $7 off its regular low price. Now on sale, the Sears 48, $47.99 with trade-in. You save $7. And now America can save money on the best-selling steel-belted radial tire in Sears history. Get them now and save yourself $28 to $60 on a set of four. At Sears, where America shops for value. Well, the two brain trusts, both in their second year at their respective clubs, Jack Pardee and Bud Wilkinson. And right now, their teams are all tied up. A lot is being said, Gary, about uh, in Cardinals about the football program there, whether or not Bud's going to be back or not. Do you have any insight well, on Well, Bud's going to wait to open up communications after the season is over, but not until then. Here is Hart throwing to Pat Tilly. And at the 35, just not quite there. Second down, 10. Hart gets good protection here, but he wanted to go to Mel Gray deep, and uh, they had funneled him right down the middle. He could not go to him, and you see he tries to dump it off late. He re a couple of times. He had pretty good protection in, but uh, didn't quite have enough on the ball to get it to Tilly. The Otis Brown now has checked in in the backfield. Brown is back there along with Anderson. They're both roommates along with Roy Green. Green, by the way, is a cook of those three. He does all the cooking. <laughs> good motion, Mel Gray. Hart gives off to Anderson, runs into his own man, but look at this. He gets a block from Joe Bostic, and he gets two yards on the play, but again, what determination. Brad Dusick eventually rammed him out of bounds. Kansas City, Pittsburgh. Now 17 to nothing at 16 yards. Who's going to beat those guys? Right short of Swan. Oakland and Houston. Uh, Houston's got another touchdown. This time a Pastorini pass to Kenny Burrow, 55-yarder. They lead 14 to 7. Paul Smith, by the way, was shaken up on that last play for the Redskins. He comes off. Harry Brooks replaces him. And the reason was a cutback block of Joe Boxer. Third down and eight yards to go for the Cardinals. Hart back to throw. Protection breaking down a little bit. Steps up. Intercepted, picked up by Joe Lavender. Lavender with his fifth interception of the year. Pat Tilly tries to get him out of bounds. Lavender with the interception, the 17th interception of the year for Washington. Lavender has 23 in his career. The opportunistic defense of the Washington Redskins once again comes through.
way to financial opportunity is sometimes filled with risk. But somewhere, there are good, solid ways to go. And our ability to put you on strong, solid ground is simply unavailable at any other investment firm. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. First you Yankee chaps took our dear old Queen Mary. Then you had me at mitigated goal to take our London Bridge. Now you've taken our quiet. Your 1984 LTD was tested against our Rolls Royce for quiet in a scrupulously fair test over identical rows at identical speeds. British fairness forces me to admit that your LTD was just as quiet as our Rolls Royce. Is there nothing left of the Empire? Ford LTD, as quiet as a Rolls Royce. Next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, the CBS Sports Spectacular. It's the third installment of the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders, plus the Mr. Universe Bodybuilding Championship and more. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. All right, Sonny, let's go back on this last interception by Joe Lavender. He just makes a bad throw, a bad read here more than anything else. He did not see Lavender. He comes back up in the park pocket because of the pressure. You see, he thought he had uh, Mark Murphy beaten, but Joe Lavender came across and intercepted it. That's his 16th interception of the year that Jim Hart has suffered another turnover for the Redskins. And that is 17 interceptions the Redskins have this year. John Riggins trying to run the football, and boy, he just bowled over Ken Stone on the near side. Roger Worley eventually ran him out of bounds. Is he strong? 6'2", 230-pounder, Centralia, Kansas farm boy. And at the 21, second down now, and still seven to go. You see there, we thought that uh, with the conditions here, and they have been in the past, because the Cardinals in the last seven games have fumbled 25 times against the Redskins. And I think uh, we figured going into this thing, the turnovers would be a factor. Two and one now. That's 33 takeovers for the year for Washington. Boy, their defense has just been outstanding. Thompson and McDaniel, the wide receivers. Benny Malone trying to go wide, and he's inside the 20 to the 19. Kurt Allerman over there from the middle linebacking spot. Making the tackle. Sets it up at the 19. Let's check Cincinnati, San Diego. Last we had it was 14-0. What is it now? It's now 14 to 3. Mike Wood kicked a 22 yard field goal for San Diego. The Jets trailing Buffalo right now. 7 to nothing. That's in the second period. Seattle and, and Cleveland. Seattle's leading 13 to nothing. Joe Theismann brings him up on a third down and four from the 19. Parks, McDaniel again split out. Forte and Harmon are running backs. Heisman, pressure put up by Dawson, and Dawson got him. Mike Dawson with a glancing blow, and that is sack number 17 for the year for St. Louis. And number one for Mike Dawson. The first sack of the year for him. You see him coming back here. It looks like Joe has some time here to deliver the ball. He kind of slips. Terry Hermeling comes in, and just a glancing blow, but that real defenseless position, and Mosley's going to be called on to come in and kick one. Dawson moved to a defensive end this year, but they're planning on moving him back possibly to the nose tackle a year from now. This is going to be a 46-yard field goal attempt by Mosley. He's 15 and 20. Mosley's kick is on the way, and Mosley has it. His 16th field goal of the year. A 46-yarder. Mosley, who had a 53-yarder earlier this year, which is the longest in the NFC. And so the Redskins with the interception and three points. Some guys never learn. They're still taking it on the chin. Gotcha. Norelco offers the Norelco Rotary Razor. Not one or two blades, but 36 blades inside three adjustable floating heads and a unique shaving angle for a very close shave without a nick or cut. So say hello to the Norelco Rotary Razor and say goodbye to Gotcha. We're not just a couple of animals who can only play football. We can be civilized, too. Tennis is sophisticated, but you still got to be fast on your feet. So we still drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. And it really tastes great. Now that we've played singles, we're looking for a nice, friendly game of doubles. 
tennis, anyone? Mm -hmm. Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. There he is, Mark Mosley. I don't know of anybody better right now. What a money kicker this man is. 50 straight PATs. He just kicked his 16th field goal. They give the Redskins a 10 to 7 lead. Not only a fine kicker, but a fine person, too. And how many pairs of socks do you say he puts on? Got on about that. 11 pairs of socks, I guess. Look at those legs, would you? It's like he has casts on there, some plastered Paris cast. Harold and Green back, and that's a squibber. Going to be tough to handle. Roy Green going back. He has a handle on it. Up to the 10, to the 15, and Green gets it back out across the 20-yard line. Monty Coleman, their special teams deluxe player, making the tackle. And the Cardinals will set it up at the 21-yard line. Stan handed here to me. The Cardinals have gained only 79 yards in 20 plays. They've had the football, but not able to make a lot happen. Had trouble moving. They had inconsistent stopping themselves and something that has plagued them uh, in most of their games with the Washington Redskins. The Otis Brown and Anderson now the running backs and Mel Gray and Pat Tilly will go flanked out at the top of the screen. First down for the 21. A give to Otis Anderson and Anderson maybe to the 24. Butts and Iron Talbert combining on the stop for Washington. This Washington defense has allowed 163 points. That is third in the NFC, and they led the entire year until they gave up 38 points last week against Pittsburgh. And they play a lot of people in that on the defense too. You know, they change in personnel uh, according to the uh, situation that uh, presents itself. They've held 10 teams to two touchdowns or less. One of them, the Cardinals, earlier this year. Second down, seven. Anderson behind Terry Steve, and what a hit is put on by guess who? Number 52, Neil Okowitz. Now, wait a minute, that's going to be a foul. Unnecessary roughness by Coy Bacon. And so that'll give him a first down. And I'm sure Jack Hardy is unhappy about that because a fine defensive play has gone for none. That's right, Okowitz really coming through here. Looks like he's following the blocking of George Collins. Coming around, you see him cut back in, but look at him knife through. Okowitz knifing through the blocking. And uh, now you see as they push him over to the sidelines, he's quit. And now watch it. Bacon just kind of gives him a shove out of bounds. Unsportsmanlike on a defense, number 79. That's a first down. That's a big break for the Cardinals. Instead of a loss on the play, they have a first down at the 40-yard line. It changes field position a little bit, too. And that's what the Cardinals haven't had the last couple of opportunities with the football. Matt Tilly is going off the field. Mel Gray, a wide receiver. Osborne has come in at a tight end. First down for the 40. The Otis Brown. Brown is to the 43-yard line. Carl Lorch, number 71, making the tackle for Washington. Boy, Coy Bacon and uh, Otis Anderson having a few words. Had a few words in. Coy was pointing at him. Anderson pointing back. Uh, you don't think Anderson doesn't draw attention? That's what you call a little trying to intimidate your opponent. Now, you're looking at this. The rain is still coming down. It's not. A, it's kind of a steady drizzle. I used to like days like this, Gary. Did you? Yeah, it slowed everybody down to my speed. <laughs> Here's Anderson. Anderson to 45, running tough to the 49-yard line. Mark Murphy, free safety, up to make the stop. An excellent tackler for this Washington team, and they're going to be short of the first down by some two yards. Third down coming up. We saw the stats just a moment ago on Jim Hart. He has Osborne coming back in now. Pat Tilly checking out. They'll have Morrell and Osborne, two tight ends, in the lineup on the short yardage play. 7.58 until halftime. At halftime, we'll be joining the NFL today with Brent, Jane, and Irv. As the Cardinals have Gray coming in motion. On a third and two, Anderson. And did he get it? No, I do not think he got it. Monty Coleman, who they brought in here, he's a young man from Central Arkansas. Some of the players tell me may be the best athlete on this team. Possibly could be. They think he can play just about any place he wants to. Big stand there by the red skin defense. So Steve Little will come in. See, it's getting a little bit muddy out there as it continues to rain. Clarence Harmon will go back. Usually it was Buddy Hardiman, but 
Harmon and Ike Forte are splitting those duties now with Hardeman out, who broke his jaw in the second quarter of last week's game. They came close to blocking one earlier. Let's see if they come with a block. He kicks it, and it was close again. Not as close as the other time, and he may have an excellent kick. Nope, it's going to make it into the end zone. Very, very close. Had the Cardinals gotten down there quicker, Sonny, you had the feeling they might have been able to keep that one in play. That was a 51-yard kick by Little, but the touchback brings it out to the 20. Hey, Dad, a ghost town. Let's park the Bronco and take a look. Look at this great mountain wagon. It's a new Ford Bronco. Let's be ghost riders. Rides good. That's Bronco's new independent front suspension. Steps right over rocks. Need gas? Nope. Bronco's been redesigned for mileage. It's the best V8 miles per gallon rating in its class. Gee, no ghosts here, Dad. I don't remember leaving these lights on. The 1980 Ford Bronco, a beautiful way to pick up your spirits. Alcoa can't wait. Since time began, nature has demonstrated the wisdom of recycling. In rain that falls to the earth, travels to the sea, and rises to the clouds again. Now, man must learn to recycle, too. At Alcoa, we've already started by initiating programs that are saving billions of aluminum cans every year. Raw materials and energy, too. Recycling. We're simply doing what nature has always done. We can't wait for tomorrow. Alcoa can't wait. Next Saturday, the CBS Sports Spectacular features the Mr. Universe Bodybuilding Champion. longer to protect the punter didn't allow them to get downfield to cover that punt. The end result, the ball went in for the touchback on a first down, Benny Malone picks up maybe two to the 22-yard line. Ten to seven, our score. Now let's check that San Diego game again. Chargers are coming back. That's right. Dan Fouts has thrown a six-yard touchdown pass to Charlie Joyner. 14 to 10 there in the second period. Chargers tied for first in the West with Denver. Seven and three records. Don Coriel's team has enough offense. They can play catch up. They can. The Jets come back. They've scored. It's now 7-6. to six. Buffalo leading the Jets. Riggins and Malone, the running back. Second down and still virtually 10. And up the middle goes Riggins. So the Redskins trying to get out of some precarious field position. On a day like today, you really got to protect the football in that part of the field, don't you? That's the most important thing. Uh, with the conditions like they are, we're regardless of where you are on the football field, and that is protected with both hands when you're getting tackled. Don't make any mistakes. Don't beat yourselves. Third down, still seven yards to go. Riggins comes out. Harmon's in with Forte. There's third down conversions. Look at that. St. Louis 0 for 5. Danny Bugs, John McDaniel split out. Harry Smith and Worley over on the near side to pick him up. Weisman on the third down. And chased by Yankowski, Ron Yankowski first to get there, the second sack of the day for the Cardinals. Bob Pollard also in on the play, but Ron Yankowski the first to get there. Good pressure this time by the defense. Don Warren, the tight end for Washington, slipped and fell down. Theismann could not deliver the ball when he wanted to. Right there, he, he wanted to deliver it. You see Yankowski coming in, making the play. Very steady football player. That's the second sack of the year for Yankowski. Mike Bragg back to kick. The two-yard line. Willard Harrell is back. Roy Green. They have twin safeties on this play. They do not put a rush on. The return is on. And Harrell is going to try to bring it out. I believe he fell on it, though. The Cardinals have it just inside the 50-yard line. Well, Monday night on CBS starts with a dramatic episode of The White Shadows starring Ken Howard. Then an hour of great comedy begins with MASH and continues with WKRP in Cincinnati. One of my favorite people, Ed Ashner, stars as Lou Grant. It's all on CBS Monday night. Well, that's a good show, isn't, isn't it? it? That's a heck of a lineup. You know, that punt that the Mike Bragg just hit, the nose of the ball did not go over. And it, by, the, by the bottom of the ball, the back of the ball coming down first, the ball curves away from you, it knifes away from you, and it really makes it difficult to catch because the ball is pulling away the entire time. Watch Harold here trying to catch the ball as it drifts away from him just can't catch it. It's a difficult ball to catch. Boy, he very alertly got on it, though, didn't he? You know, the man shaking up right now is Ted Frisch, and they can ill afford to lose him. He does all the snapping for him on punts, PATs, 
And he is now down at the 45-yard line. That was a good point. That was a 34-yard kick, by the way, by Mike Bragg. It really gets him up high. Good field position for the Cardinals. Opportunity to get some points with only 5.04 left in the second quarter to get some points before halftime. Cardinals in the first game of this year lost 17 to 7, but they lost four fumbles. They had one interception. They trailed 14 to nothing before they knew what happened. A little different today now. They stayed close. I think more importantly, they got on the scoreboard. There's Frisch. He's up and walking off the field, and that's good. He and Tom Brahaney are two of the best snappers in the NFL. Yeah, they, they both of them do an excellent job, and that's that's a hard job to do for a center. Just Put that thing between your legs all the time, snapping it back there when somebody's not It's hard to helmet. find him. It's, it's hard to find him, isn't it? It it's is. It's amazing how few come out of the college ranks. A lost art. There's Brown and Anderson, the running backs. First down from the 49 of Washington. Play action by Hart. Throwing to Mel Gray. And Lamar Parrish hitting on pass interference is coming up. Mel Gray was hammered as the ball arrived in his vicinity. Parrish defending on the fleet-footed number 85, and that will give the Cardinals a first down outside the 20-yard line. This is a new rule this year. You cannot intentionally try to hurt somebody. And you see the pass, Gray, going up the sidelines. That's an incomplete pass, but a personal foul on number 24. You see the forearm going in, the forearm, he forearmed him right in the helmet. But that will be marked from the line of scrimmage, Sonny. That makes a lot of difference. Well, it does, but uh, it's a good rule. Uh, you know, the ball was overthrown, and he, he just went at him with the forearm, and he got caught for it. A little talking, intimidation. We're That's talking a about personal foul on number 24, the defense. Incomplete pass. First down. Well, that's two personal fouls against the Redskins in this first half, earlier against Boy Bacon. You know, Mel Gray hasn't scored against the Redskins since 1975. And did you he remember score that then? One? <laughs> you did that game, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. I'm not going to open up that bag of worms. First down now from the 34-yard line. That's Gray in motion. Otis Anderson, he's to the 30-yard line. Inside it, maybe. That's Olkowitz again. He has a handful of tackles. Check another score for you. Well, Seattle embarrassed by L.A. Look what they've done now. 16 to nothing. That's in the second period. I just can't believe the Rams shut them down like they did last week. With all that offense they had. Neither could Jim Zorn. <laughs> he said it's a game he'll long remember. Gain of five by Anderson on that last play. Second and five from the 29-yard line. Four, 27 remaining till halftime. 10 to seven, Washington. Anderson again. Carl Lorch has it. No gain on that play. And I think another little warning that time to Carl Lorch, Ben Dreith indicating, hey, let's stop it when I blow the whistle. They are concerned about Anderson. And he draws a crowd if he doesn't even get the football. Carl Lorch is quite a guy, a native of Hawaii, played his football at USC. He's a character. You know what I saw him do? You're going to tell this story? Go ahead. He ate a live crab. He said, that's what they do in a wife. A live crab. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't either, <laughs> and I still don't. Monty Coleman has now come in defensively. On a third down, five, nothing. Just nothing developed on that play because Coy Bacon was there. And now Little will come in. Boy, Coy Bacon just destroys this play. Steve coming over, but Bacon beat him to the punch that time, delivered the blow, and instead of accepting it, and defeated the trap block. This will be a 48-yard field goal attempt. The longest that Little has kicked is a Cardinal record of 51 yards. Roger Worley to hold. He's trying to tie it up at the 308 mark. Little's kick is on the way. It's going to go wide to the right. And so the Redskins hold as Steve Little, who had hit 7 of 12 this year, you can see that one started out to the right the moment it took off. And so the Redskins still have that three-point lead with 3.04 left in this first half of play. Next week on CBS, week number 12. Some good football games. Dallas and Washington, Green Bay, Buffalo will be in Philadelphia for the St. Louis game. Other NFL regional action, Detroit and Minnesota. The Giants against Tampa Bay. Riggins and Malone, the running back, Steisman on first down. 
incomplete. Ricky Thompson, the intended receiver. I tell you, the Cardinals are getting him a little difficulty, aren't they? They're putting hey, on pretty good pressure. He threw that one a little behind him. Uh, a little upset with himself about delivering the ball behind him, but uh, he had rolled out and he really cut down the field. You see his stats there, four out of six, 50 yards. Explain that. What do you mean, cut down the field? Well, when you roll to one side of the field and roll out to that side, it's difficult to go back across the field with the football. So you're kind of narrowing the uh, area that you can throw the ball in. Second down, 10 now from the 31. Dawson, Jankowski, and Pollard lined up now. Heisman gives off to Benny Malone. And Malone, close to the first down. He's going to be a yard short, out to the 40-yard line. And this guy has been a tough customer today. Same, Carl Allen made the tackle. Same play they ran earlier. Remember, they tried to run that in a passing situation earlier, and uh, they didn't quite break it. That time, he got a little more running room. And so it's third down, a yard to go. Malone with 41 yards today. His high for the year, by the way, is 65 yards. That happened a couple of weeks ago against the New Orleans Saints. Third down, a yard. Martin, Riggins, and Malone in the running backfield. Malone and... I don't know. It'll be close. According to where they mark it, he kind of fell back in. They had Greg Dubonet in on that offensive stance up front, that offensive line, and they may have to measure. Where he fell, and I think Ben Dreith indicates it is a first down. They don't need to measure. We're coming now to the two-minute warning. As Bugs and McDaniel come in, Harmon checks out. Riggins stays in at a running back spot, and the two-minute warning now at RFK Stadium. So the Washington Redskins, they'd like to add to their three-point lead when we return after this timeout. Welcome to our people-pleasing places. Good luck. Holiday Inn makes me feel like a winner. That's why my team chooses Holiday Inn. No surprises. Beds always comfortable, always. Big rooms. And as a Holiday Inn hotel near just about everywhere we play. Well, let's go call them like we see them. You have to see them to call them. Holiday Inn is number one. <laughs> and people please Announcing a gas-saving breakthrough from Ford Motor Company. The first and only automatic overdrive transmission in any American-made car. When your car reaches about 40, Ford's new transmission automatically shifts into overdrive. The result? Your engine runs one-third slower for increased highway fuel efficiency. It's one of many engineering improvements that help 1980 Ford, Mercury, and Lincoln cars average over 120 more estimated highway miles than last year on 20 gallons of gas. That's incredible. Automatic overdrive at Ford, Mercury, and Lincoln dealers. Well, our score 10-7 here, but looking ahead next week, Washington is going to be playing Dallas in week number 12. The Cardinals will play Philadelphia, and that'll be a big game in the NFC East. Green Bay, Philadelphia, other regional games, finds Detroit against Minnesota, New Orleans, Seattle, the Giants, Tampa Bay. Be sure now to consult your local listings for the game and time in your area. I'm looking forward to that game next week in Philadelphia. St. Louis and the Eagles have always put on quite a show. The Cardinals really going to figure in this NFC East title chase. Got to, have to. On a first down, this is Ike Forte, and Forte to the 44-yard line. Time now of importance, and they have another play call. They don't have to huddle. 151, you see it in the upper right-hand portion of your screen. Harmon and Forte, the running backs behind Theismann. 10 to 7, Washington with the lead. Theismann complete to Don Warren. He has a first down to the Cardinal 40. And Mark Mosley is going to get a crack at a field goal as Washington is calling a timeout. They'll try to get it closer. But they're already moving close to Mr. Mosley's distance after that 17-yard completion to Don Warren. Okay, this Don Warren, who was their first draft pick in the fourth round, is becoming quite a tight end, isn't he? That's the same pass, Pat, and Washington went the length of the field on against Cleveland. Warren goes to the middle of the field and hooks up. The two backs come out and hook up on the hash marks. Theisman has a very simple read of going, taking one of the three, and he just delivered the ball to the open man. The Redskins have two timeouts remaining. That's their first. The Cardinals also with two. The ball just inside the 40-yard line. Look at the first downs in this game, 10 to 7. The Cardinals 
in this game have 95 yards in total offense and 71 of those yards by Anderson. He has been 40% of the Cardinals offense coming into this game. What a burden for a rookie, huh? He's going to be carrying that burden. He can do it very well. Washington, by the way, has 154 yards in total offense. So they obviously are getting the better of it here in this first half of play. Bugs, McDaniel, the wide receivers. First down at the 39. Heisman back. Bugs. But still on his feet. He won't go down. Eventually, Mark Arneson tackles him. They're going to mark the ball outside the 25-yard line. It's another first down for Washington. They have another play call. You see the tire. First down. The Redskins, their two-minute offense, and they're doing an excellent job. Heisman back again. Complete again. Again, it's Danny Bug. And this time, it's to the 11-yard line, and it's another first down. Roger Worley with a tackle. The surprising thing, they're working against the strength, the strength of the Cardinal defense going against Roger Worley. As you can see, the Redskins use their second timeout, stopping the clock with 109, the ball at the 11-yard line. Very good organization on this drive by Washington. They've shown very good poise, and they have just marched the football. You go back and look at the set. They ran the, pattern, the same pattern twice in succession. An X-in pattern is what it's called. Danny Bugs running a square, and he goes up, finds the open spot, splits it, makes the reception, almost comes out of this thing. Good hustle by Arneson to make the tackle. They come right back and repeat the play to take the ball down in close about the 11-yard line. So what you're saying, they call the same play twice, and regardless of what happened to it the first time. Just look at it. Look how similar it looks. The same type of pattern. Fastman back, waiting again. Good protection that time, and he delivers the same spot. Very same spot. <laughs> Our producer, Bob Rose, said he just played the same tape twice. Yeah, he's just kidding. <laughs> they didn't do that. It was going to fake the old quarterback out up here. We're going to watch it. I was looking at the yard mark. From the 11-yard line, this is the eighth play of the drive. Mike Forte inside. He's to the 8-yard line. Time, one minute. They have another play called second down seven. They can get a first and goal at about the half yard line. Back to throw, Theismann broken up. One of the interior linemen got a hand on that football. Looks like Hermerling's taking himself out of the game. He's hurt his arm, and Greg Dubonnet will replace him. Let's see if we can pick up who batted this ball down. Ike Forte comes wide open on a little hook pattern down the side. He just hooked in there tight you see him stopping see who gets a hand on it I think it's Pollard Bob Pollard Bob Pollard got a hand on it knocked in you see how open number 30 Forte was if the ball had been thrown accurately that's Perry Smith trying to come up on the play Bob Pollard who has six sacks putting good pressure on that time third down now they don't get it here Mosley will be called on Feisman delivering the ball touchdown Ricky Thompson drive by the Washington Redskins a touchdown catch by Ricky Thompson that is his second of 1979 and that's only the second for wide receivers on the Washington Redskins the 79 16 to 7 our score they caught him in a blitz Gary and he just ran a square out pattern and beat him Boy, Thompson's having a big day earlier he had a 33 yard catch Mosley now will attempt to add his 51st straight PAT with 46 seconds left in this first half. Mosley's kick. It's 17 to 7 in favor of the Redskins. And so the Redskins, who lost to New Orleans, then lost last week to the Pittsburgh Steelers, trying to break that two-game losing streak and stay very much alive in this NFC title picture. Boy, take a look at this. Dyson really throws the ball perfectly this time. You see the pattern up at the top of your screen, developing. The blitz was on. He had single coverage. Pressure was just getting to him as he delivered the ball. You see it hit him right on the numbers. Beat Perry Smith for the touchdown. You know how long it took them to march 69 yards? Only 2 minutes and 18 seconds, and yet they ran 10 plays. But they, as you said, during the drive, they were using their time uh, very well. They called the timeouts at the right time. Great execution of the two-minute drill. 
Harrell and Green will go back for St. Louis. 17-7. That's the score they beat the Cardinals by the first time they met. But that last drive, I really was impressed by Washington's play. Theismann's had a good first half throwing the football. He's really been on the money all day. There's Mosley. Boy, he has golf gloves on. He has everything on, doesn't he? <laughs> I tell you, these kickers, they have a routine they go through. They do, every one of them. So the leading kickoff return man is in the conference. Roy Green is back. They're squibbing that on purpose. This is Roy Green bringing it up to the 30, 35, 36 yard line. Adi Coleman made the stop. Don't you believe that? He's squibbing that kick on purpose. I thought the first time he might have missed it, but that time again, he hit one of those knuckle balls. I'm really not sure if he is on purpose or not. He kind of shook his head coming off the Did field, he? Gary, and he was, had a little conversation with John Hilton, the special teams coach. Because usually he gets them up very high. And the last two have been line drive affairs. When you, when you put as much lean on the football as, as uh, Mark does, sometimes you can hit it up a little high and drive the football. 21-yard return that time by Roy Green. 40 seconds left in this first half. The Cardinals trail 17-7. to Hart. Matt Tilly overthrown, Parrish over there defending. He's been looking for Tilly all day long, but just can't seem to make connections with him. See the difference he did that time on the when the ball was overthrown, he came off of Tilly. Last time he hit Mel Gray in the same type of situation. He wanted to make sure he didn't get a penalty call here. You know, Tilly earlier this year caught seven passes for 114 yards against Washington. He also had seven for 123 last year here in RFK Stadium, so they figure he would be effective, but thus far, they just haven't been able to get hooked up. Second down, 10 for the 36, 34 seconds to go. First half. Joe Jones putting pressure on, gets it to Anderson, and Anderson get out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Monty Coleman over there again. You're hearing his name called a lot. I'm sure that Monty coming in the game under these situations, he has such good speed and agility that he's comes into the game as a linebacker is a sign to cover Otis Anderson coming out of that backfield all over the football field. He's an 11th round draft pick, the first player ever drafted out of Central Arkansas. He runs at 40 and 4.6, and he was a safety as a junior in college. Shows you the speed he has. He's just learning the linebacker position. Look at that, 10 yards in the first half passing for St. Louis. That's got to be an all-time low for a half a play. Had to drag somebody with him. Going nowhere that time. Harry Brooks all over. Otis Anderson. And now the Cardinals evidently are going to call for a timeout. Nope, Washington's going to call for it. And that's their final timeout. They still feel with 18 seconds left, they might break one here. They feel that they can block the punt. You better believe they're going to be going after Steve Little this time, trying to block the thing. Look at Part E. You know what he was saying, don't you? Come after him. That's he was right. waving them like a wave of on-rushing linemen. He wants all ten people coming after that one. He'll keep one man back, and everyone else will come after him. Yeah, if they can uh, block the kick and uh, recover the ball, they get it. They, they'll stop the clock with change of possession. 18 seconds. Washington with a 17 to 7 lead, using their last time out. They're going to try to get some more points yet. Ray Waddy has come in now for Washington as Steve Little knows he's going to have a big rush put on. He did the last time but he got a 51 yard kick underway. Washington doesn't even have anybody back to receive the punt. Only man back is Harmon about seven eight yards back from the line of scrimmage. Little, oh he just got it underway just barely and they're gonna let the ball hit down there number 27 Carl Allen. It was Hover and Malott both of whom who almost got that kick by Steve Little, that's three narrow misses. Good smart play by the Skins, and Little did a good job uh, anticipating the rush to get that punt off. Nine seconds left until halftime. The ball at the 27-yard line of Washington. Well, Bud Wilkinson said he didn't want to have to play catch-up football. He felt that the Redskins, if he could get ahead of them early, are not a good catch-up team, but the tables have been reversed here on him in the first half. Well, he's going to be forced into it in the second half. Cardinals are going to have to get their passing game going. Feisman just going to follow on the football. And that's going to do it. 
And so the Washington Redskins with this very, very big pivotal game, often good footing as they take a 17-7 lead into the dressing room with them. A team that Sonny, you and I talked about it earlier, doesn't want that second half of the season to get away from them like it did last year. And I think they showed in the first half that uh, they, they believe that this game is important and they played that way, uh, taking a 17-7 lead in. And they can put an awful lot of pressure on the uh, Philadelphia Eagles because they have to they have to be watching this. They have the Dallas Cowboys tomorrow night. And also Dallas comes here against Washington next Sunday. And they have the Giants, so you know how difficult it's going to be. Washington, by the way, has four of their final six games right here in RFK Stadium, which could be to their advantage. However, interestingly enough, Washington is four and two on the road this year, which I think speaks very well. They're two and two here at home. They're also three and one against the NFC East, which could be important when you get down into the playoff picture. It's got to be. They're, they're shooting for the playoffs. That's what they're working very hard to, uh, to, to reach the playoffs. And they, as you said, they don't want the same thing to happen to them. They don't want to fold up. They're losing, what did they lose? Five out of six, eight of their last ten last year. And uh, they're trying to guard against that. And uh, any indication in this first half, it looks like uh, that's exactly what they're doing. They played well. Well, Washington has won six of the last seven against the Cardinals after last year having their five-game winning streak snapped in RFK Stadium. That was the 12th game of the year, and that was when Willard Harrell had that 70-yard return for a touchdown. And the Cardinals were able to, at that time, break a long drought against Washington. You know, Sonny, at this time, we'd like to congratulate our good friend who's been helping us here on the Washington games, Mr. Colburn Tyler. I should say Dr. Colburn Tyler, director Doctor. of the physical education program at Ferrum College, which is in Ferrum, Virginia. And here he is. This guy, they won the Junior College Coastal Conference for the seventh time as the number one junior college in the East, and they'll be the host of the postseason East-West Bowl game. I'm glad to have you with us. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It's a little bit warmer down in Virginia, maybe, than it is here today. We're glad to have you with us, Colburn. And we're going to be back with more of our halftime activities in just a moment. Here's two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. How are you holding up? I'm all right. You want to go for 10 miles? If you make it, I'll buy you a beer. If we make it, I'll buy you a long brow. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Tonight, let it be low and brow. Dad and I are mechanics. And we like cars that are easy to take care of. That's why we own Pinto's. Right, gang? No! I bought mine because it's pretty! Has lots of room! Fun to drive! There are lots of reasons why we're a nine Pinto family. Join the Pinto family, the Ford Pinto. With 40 standard features, compare Pinto. It may be the best small car value in America. I like my Pinto because it's red. Yeah, that's what happens when you raise your kids to think for themselves. Look what's happened to home heating and air conditioning costs. Up and up. Up over 80% in five years. But there's a way you can fight back in your attic. Add another layer of pink Owens Corning fiberglass insulation. Ask your dealer or contractor how much more you need. Fight back against rising fuel costs. Get Owens Corning fiberglass insulation now. It's cheaper than oil. To get to the Super Bowl, you've got to be better than all the rest. The team that's going this year is the best team in football, the NFL team of CBS Sports. Pat Summerall and Tom Brookshire. Vin Scully and George Allen. Kurt Gowdy and Hank Stram. Lindsey Nelson and Paul Horning. To follow your team, follow our team. The best team in football, the NFL team of CBS Sports. Chuck Muncy is off to a big start with New Orleans. He has just scored for the second time today. Let's get you up to date on all the scores around the league. The game you're watching, 17-7 at the half. I don't have to give any details on that one. Tampa Bay and Detroit. The Lions lead at 7-3. Bo Robinson, six yards out. O'Donohue, 32-yard field goal for the Buccaneers. In the Miami-Baltimore game, Nat Moore has scored twice. 18 and 15 yards from Greasy. Von Schaman missed the second extra point. 
Buffalo leading the Jets. Also a missed extra point by the Jets in that game. Collier, one yard out for Buffalo. Long, one yard away for the Jets. Pittsburgh, 20. Kansas City, nothing. And Bradshaw has thrown two touchdown passes, a 26-yard flea flicker to Stallworth and 16 to Lynn Swan. Matt Barr, 31 yards and 24 yards. Oakland and Houston are now tied. Stabler has tossed two touchdown passes, 23 yards to Chester and three yards to Casper. Pastorini, 55 yards to Burrow. And San Diego trails Cincinnati by a point in that game. Ray Griffin, a 95-yard interception for a Cincinnati touchdown. Then the Bengals came back with two field goals by Mike Wood and about six-yard pass to Joyner. And in the Seattle-Cleveland game, Sherman Smith has scored twice, six yards and two yards. Septi in a 34-yard field goal. Cockroft on the board for the Browns, 28-yard field goal. Now, the story here is the kicking game. Nine-nothing. The Rams are ahead of the Bears. Early in the game, after their first possession, Chicago was set back to punt. Number 86 is Bob Parson. As he punted, 51 was blocked in to his left ankle, and Parsons fell and had to be helped off the field. The next time the Bears got the ball, Walter Payton was ready to punt, but Parsons said, I can try it anyhow, and he got off only a 30-yarder. So they were still warming Payton up on the sideline. Parsons came in for his third punt. It was blocked. The Rams ran it in for their only touchdown of the game, and now they lead it by a score of 9-0 in Chicago. Also underway, Green Bay leading Minnesota. 7-0 is the score in that game. Whitehurst, 24 yards to Thompson in that contest. And New Orleans shutting out San Francisco, 17-0. Those two Muncie touchdowns, two and 10 yards. And your premium kick one 42 yards away. Let's now check in on the Ohio State Buckeyes and show you why we think they are the top-ranked college team this year. Next week, of course, they must go into Ann Arbor, Michigan. Big showdown against the Wolverines. They've got the young sophomore quarterback, Art Schleister, scoring from the one-yard line. They are not playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's Iowa, dressed like Pittsburgh. Schleister, 34 yards to Doug Donnelly, who is a talented outside receiver for the Buckeyes. It was 27-0. Now, watch the defense. Marcus Merrick drops back in the end zone for the Bucks. He intercepted two passes on the game and also recovered a fumble. Now, this will be Vince Skilling to the secondary, intercepting. Pass that was underthrown, and he returned the ball 49 yards. Ohio State with a lot of speed in that defensive secondary. Freshman tailback, Timmy Spencer from the two. It was 34-0. 34-7 nothing. was the final score in that game. And how about what happened to Notre Dame when they traveled down to Knoxville to take on Tennessee? Johnny Majors was ready, wasn't he? Tennessee was upset last week, but on this Saturday afternoon, they were equal to the challenge of the Fighting Irish and Dan Devine. As a matter of fact, they dominated the game completely. Watch here. Jimmy Streeter. 52-yard run to Notre Dame's three-yard line. And this led to a Tennessee touchdown by Hubert Simpson. It was his second of four touchdowns on the day. That made it 21-6. Here's Streeter now pulling back. He wants Anthony Hancock to the Notre Dame two-yard line. And Simpson pounded across for his third of the afternoon. 21 seconds left in the half. It's 30-12. Tennessee's defense Stop Vegas Ferguson and Notre Dame fourth and goal. Ferguson, though, did have three touchdowns on the day for the Irish. This one a 10-yarder. It was 40-18 Tennessee over Notre Dame. The NFL today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Tonight at Archie Bunker's place. I got an ex-con for a pot. A skeleton in Murray's closet may cause the bar to lose its license. At Archie Bunker's place. Tonight. Tonight on CBS.
They're known as zebras, and that's the least of the abuse. Being an NFL official is a thankless job, especially when done well. When an official does his job right, no one notices. But let him make one mistake, and he's all too visible. They are the constant target of fans, players, and coaches. But you know what? Without them, the game could not go on. Hello, I'm Robert Rogers, the referee. And on the field, I give the signals, which mean things like, uh, uh, let's go or let's get rolling. Start the little hand or start the big hand or... Hi, uh, Mom and Dad. Most referee signals are so easy, a monkey could do it. But some really use signals are rougher. Sometimes a rascally rabbit or furry squirrel visits the field, and then this is the signal. As an authority figure, we referees are respected and revered wherever we go. Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? That poor never touched the ground. That's not fair, Mr. Referee. You refs are terrible. I'll see you after the game. Sometimes those rascally rogues of the grid island go out of their way to make us look silly. Me, me. Well, they may have their fun, but we whiffs have our own ways of rising to the occasion. Sometimes trouble brews, and it's our job to keep order. Now watch me very closely as I coolly take charge and keep a potential riotous situation under perfect control. Now, now here, fellows, cut that out. Cut, cut that out now. Oh, oh, oh gracious, this is a, a little frightening. Stop, stop it. Oh, 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 oh help. help. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Oh, you, you, you rotten rascals. Like me, every ref has his own crafty tricks for stopping fights. As you can see, it's easy to take charge of most situations if you use your head. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Ford and your Ford dealers, who bring you the better idea cars and trucks for the 80s. And by Radio Shack, the nationwide supermarket of sound, your electronic Christmas store. It's the Delco Freedom Battery Sale. What do you want from a car battery, America? Hi, I'm Dick Butkus. Just a few years ago, I was the middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears. I love playing pro football, but my biggest thrill came with my election into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm very proud to be a part of this up-to-the-minute sports show place, where the total pro football story is told in many exciting ways. The Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, is open every day of the year except Christmas. I hope you'll visit here soon. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. There's our score, Washington leading St. Louis 17 to 7. And prior to the start of today's game, they had a Redskin alumni homecoming. And there he is, without number nine, running onto the football field, one Mr. Sonny Jurgensen. I was running wide open, too. You really were, <laughs> but you're not moving very well there. It's as fast as I could get across the field, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that was a scramble for me. Was that right? But it was a, a good day, and there are some of the other uh, ex-teammates that came back and uh, joined you, Sam Huff, and uh, kind of fun you know, once in a while to get them all back together. Well, it is to see all the, the some of the old-timers. Charlie Justice was here, and uh, it was fun to, uh, to see some of the people. So I understand now they're going to take people like yourself put the names and the numbers up on the side of the stadium like they do in Dallas is that some what do they call the Washington Hall of Stars something like that yes I, from what I understand I think you're supposed to do that next week thank right. you Gary okay well let's look at uh, some of the uh, stats that we have in this first half of play I guess the one that's the most obvious is the fact that only what 10 yards passing for the Cardinals Jim Hart only two out of eight 
two out of eight, ten yards. They're going to have to get their passing game on track. You told me before the game that the Cardinals felt that Otis Anderson had to carry the ball 20 times for them to win. He carried it 19 times in the first half. Isn't that something? And caught one pass. So outside receiver for the Cardinals, both of them do not have a catch. And there's that peculiar-looking kickoff again, taken by Roy Green. Green out to the 25, and Green to the 30-yard line. Ray Waddy up to make the stop, the free agent rookie out of Texas A&I. And so the Cardinals, who just couldn't get their passing game going in that first half, trailing 17-7. to 7. Ten yards passing. I don't believe that's ever happened to Jim Hart. Well, they got to get a little emotion going for them right now. They need a big play. They need to get something going if, uh, to get back in this football game. They didn't want to play catch up. They're going to have to now. Wayne Morris, Otis Anderson, the running backs. Gray, Tilly, blanked out. Tilly comes in motion. Hart going to throw on first down. Complete to Wayne Morris, and Morris rammed out of bounds at the 31-yard line. So that's the start anyway, as Brad Dusick over there ramming him out of bounds. Morris with a catch. He had five catches last week in that win against Minnesota. Coming in here, he had 26 for the year. Well, he made a good defensive play then, a play-action fake. They were trying to go deep. Hart came off and went to the back, come out of the backfield, and uh, Dusick played it very well. Pickup of two, second down and eight. The stats on Jim. I only gave him a yard, I guess, on that. He has 11. Let's make it second and nine. Otis Anderson and Anderson across the 35 to the 36. Dave Butts making the stop, and the Cardinals come to a third down. Just looking on the sidelines here, the Redskins. Terry Hermeling came out very late. Looked like he's got his elbow wrapped to try to get some further word on uh, what actually took place with uh, his injury. He took himself out of the game on that series. Monty Coleman, Pete Wysocki, the linebackers on this third down, four yards to go. Hart on the third down. Overthrows Mel Gray. Mark Murphy had a shot at an interception. A little too tall for Mel Gray at the 45-yard line. Joe Lavender was defending on the play. And the Cardinals' first series does not materialize into a first down. Well, they had good coverage that time, and the ball had been deflected a little more. I think Murphy would have come up with another interception. There's the average for Steve, his longest kick of the day, 51 yards. Clarence Harmon goes back for Washington. I don't think Washington's had a return on them. Their punts the entire day. Let's see if they come after this one, trying to block it. They've been close on all three kicks. I'm sure the Cardinals talked about that at half. This time, not as much pressure put on. Harmon's going to let it hit. And that ball's not going to go anywhere. That shows you how muddy that field is. Well, he, he stopped it right in his track. It looked like a good wedge, didn't it? There's Bud Wilkinson after that 39-yard punt. His team down 17-7 to as the Redskins will have their first possession of the second half of play. And I see that Hermeling has come into the lineup with that heavily wrapped right arm. He's at the left offensive tackle spot. We understand he had a contusion of the elbow, but as we mentioned, it's taped up and he's back in. Here's Benny Malone. Malone for two yards to the 27-yard line. Malone had a very good first half for this team. There's Theisman. I tell you, he's thrown the ball very judiciously this year, hitting 59% of his passes. Eight touchdowns, ten interceptions, but of those ten interceptions, Sonny, it's pointed out to me three of those were tipped passes. Well, you do. I tell you, you don't like those kind. They're the ones that hurt the most. McDaniel, Thompson, the wide receiver. Second and eight. Also, they split out Don Warren, so in effect, they have three wide receivers. Give to Malone, tried to cross him up, and he's close to the 30-yard line. Mike Dawson will be credited with that tackle. And so we come to a third down, and here comes Bugs, Forte, and Harmon in. Ricky Thompson, Benny Malone, and John Riggins will check out. Nobody utilizes their personnel and role playing better than this Washington team. Jack believes getting everyone involved, where everybody has to be alert on the sidelines because you could be playing your next play. It's an age of specialization as far as Washington's concerned. Third down, five. <laughs> Eisman with time to throw. Broken up. 
And that's Allerman, Kurt Allerman, who I believe got the hand on the ball. Dawson slow in getting up, and now the Redskins will have to kick the football. They had a blitz on Joe Head, John McDaniel coming wide open. He had him open on, the, on a quick post pattern, but the ball got knocked down. And so Harrell will go back, rag to kick. You know, this guy has had only 16 of his kicks returned. That shows you how high he gets them in the air. They have to make the fair catch so often. And he hit another one very high. Harold back, calls for the fair catch. And that's just another chapter in the kicking of Mike Bray. You just can't return a kick like that. Special teams down there in a hurry. The special teams leads the NFL in part return average, holding teams to 4.3. Here's an exciting Radio Shack gift idea. Space Patrol walkie-talkies. Christmas favorite for over 15 years. Okay, DJ, I'll meet you. Every Real two-way radios for outdoor fun and adventure. Two different models, each with Morse code key. This one has a built-in AM radio. Let your kids join over 3 million delighted Space Patrol owners with a gift price walkie-talkie. That's just $9.95 and $14.95 each. Only at Radio Shack, your Christmas electronic store. Introducing the first new truck of the 80s, the only American 4x4 pickup with independent front suspension, the 1980 Ford. And for the first time ever, we're going to run a four-wheel drive over these 4x4 beams next to this wall of light bulbs. A rod is attached to the front wheel and another to the door. Now watch as Ford's unique 4x4 independent front suspension steps over the beams independently. The wheel rod is breaking bulbs, but the door rod doesn't. See the first new truck of the 80s. It's built. Ford Tough. Next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern on the CBS Sports Spectacular. The action on the lane and in the water. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. We come back with 11.53 to go in the third quarter. Both teams have had one crack at it, couldn't move the football. And now the Cardinals with their second opportunity in the second half. Wayne Morris, Otis Anderson, the running backs from the 31-yard line. Mel Gray in motion. Hard back. Pat Tilly with his 30th catch of the year and a first down to the 49. Brad Dusick, however, wait a minute, hold the phone. The flag is inside the 25-yard line holding, and the Cardinals are their worst enemy. They have done this so often this year. This is the first uh, reception for an outside receiver for the Cardinals all day. Finally cut the ball to uh, a wide receiver. Found him wide open in there. Are we going to get holding? Offense holding number 68. That's Terry Steve. Terry Steve was a guilty party. Good pattern by the Cardinals, but all for naught. So instead of a first down at the 49, they now have a first and 20 from the 22-yard line. I need to tell you that is a remarkable difference. Tilly and Gray, the wide receiver. That, by the way, is the first penalty against St. Louis. All right, on the delay to Wayne Morris, and Morris gets seven, maybe eight yards. Dave Butts making the tackle, the former St. Louis Cardinal, the number one pick of St. Louis in 1973. A couple of third quarter scores, Jerry. Cleveland's coming back against Seattle. They now trail 16 to 10. Pittsburgh leading Kansas City. I think it's 20 to three now. Boy, are they tough. From the 29, second down now, 12 yards to go. Gray Tilly's blanked out. 17 to 7, our score here. A Washington Redskin to the lead. Hart complete to Bill Morrell, the tight end, and that will be a first down. And another flag. Morrell with only his second catch of the year. Ken Houston made the tackle. Bud Wilkinson really likes Bill Morrell. He says he's an excellent athlete. Talking to Gary Paris about him, he said that uh, all he has to do is learn. He's going to be a good one. He's just very uh, green right now. Gonna have a personal foul against Washington. That's their third of the game, isn't it? Let's take a look. Listen. Personal foul number 50 on a defense. Spearing. First down. Spearing. Pete, Pete Wysocki. There you go. Pete Wysocki. Number 50 comes in late on this. Uh, the rail hooks up in the middle. Very similar to the Don Warren pass at Washington runs. Hooking up, finding the open spot. You see him. Number 80 right there. Stops, find the open spot, 
takes the reception, makes a move downfield. Watch number 50 coming in, Spearing right there. Morrell, a six-round draft pick of Pittsburgh this year, couldn't make that talented team, and now looks like he has a big future at St. Louis. 14-yard pass completion, a 15-yard penalty, and here's Otis Anderson. Goes out of bounds. He may have lost something on that one. Ken Houston, Coy Bacon. You know, the last time that the Cardinals played this Washington team, Ken Houston had 11 solo tackles. He was all over the place. As they had him up in the same type of position that time to come on a blitz. Cardinals went wide, so it didn't materialize. Monty Coleman comes in. Pete Wysocki checks out. Coleman last week had two fumble recoveries in that game against Pittsburgh. I'm impressed with him. Second down, 11. They lost a yard. That's Gray in motion. And there's Hart. Intercepted, picked up again by Parrish. And Parrish now has eight interceptions. That is a career high in a season for this young man. And it was against Pat Tilly again. You keep throwing in his area and you're going to get burned. Sec he almost had another one earlier. The same type of thing, 17 to 7. To good friends. A toast. Tonight Here's to a vanishing breed. Bill Evans, bachelor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The end of a perfectly good ladies' man. Oh. <laughs> to Bill Evans, a free man. 13 more hours. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Speech! 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 Come on, you guys. You're beautiful. At American, people are the difference. Last year, over 200,000 people applied here at the industry's first flight attendant college. And Vicki Getz is one of the few we accepted. We taught her to make your flight comfortable, reliable, and enjoyable. But we didn't have to teach her to be nice. We're American Airlines, and finding people like Vicki is one of the things we do best. Jim Hart, a moment ago, threw his 17th interception, and Lamar Parrish came away with his eighth pickoff of this year. Talk about it, it sounds redundant to continue to say it. Why throw against the strength? Best defender, I think, the single cover in football. You see what he does right there, just steps in front of Pat Tilly and makes him his eighth interception of the year. The only man that has more is Ryan Fell for Houston. He has nine, but of course, Paris leads the NFC. And here is John Riggins, a workhorse across the 40-yard line. John Fairfield making the tackle. There he is, Lamar Parrish. He, along with Coy Bacon, came over from Cincinnati for number one draft pick, and that may have been a steal. Boy, was it ever. He just he can make the play. He has such quick feet and great reaction that he can stand and wait, read the pattern, and if you make a mistake against him, as Jim did then, Ball was a little late in arriving, and he got the interception. Third turnover for the Cardinals. You know, last year, Parrish was hurt down the stretch. That's one of the big reasons they did not finish well. Give to Riggins again. Big John this time to the 44-yard line. He'll come to a third down, still four yards to go. Fairfield and Favron combining on the tackle. Boy, the Cardinals have 33 turnovers this year. It's at number 17 for Jim. 17 interceptions. At the 45, third down, three. Riggins comes out. Riggins, by the way, 41 yards, 11 carries. There's Joe's stats. Boy, he's been over 60% most of the year. He dropped below that last week. Came into this game throwing 59% for the year. Harmon, Forte, the running backs. This is Harmon trying to get the first down. Very, very close. On a third and three, the hard running back from Mississippi State came very close. It looks like he may be short. I think it may be close enough for measurement. Danny Bugs, the wide receiver, indicated they were short. <laughs> Armin says we've got it, but they're going to bring the sticks in. The white shirts of the Cardinals say they don't have it. The red shirts that we have it. You know, it's interesting to me, uh, this rivalry between the Redskins and Cardinals and how the Redskins have done so well on six of the last seven. Matchups are important, aren't they, sometimes? 
just made it, yes, matchups are important. You get confidence playing against the team. As you said earlier, six out of seven wins, the Redskins have defeated the Cardinals, and uh, they feel like when they come to play the Cardinals that they can defeat them. Well, interestingly enough, the Redskins handed the Cardinals two devastating losses in 76 and 77 to keep them out of the playoffs. The Cardinals wanted to turn about spare play, but right now, Redskins are not letting that happen. Here's Benny Malone on the first down run, and he's to the point of 45 to the 43. Ken Stone eventually stopped him. Eric Williams, they just ran over him. This is an indication of the strength of Benny Malone here. Good blocking. You see the puller, Ron Saul pulling, Benny Malone following John Riggins block, block here, and you just see the strength. He's got good leg strength driving, almost picks up another first down. Picked up eight yards, second and two. He comes out of the game now. Harmon and Riggins are the running backs. Warren comes flanked to the bottom of the screen. The reason Warren is a wide receiver as much as the tight end. Riggins trying to get the first down, and he has it. Inside the 40 to the 39. Another touchdown here, Sonny. And the Redskins are going to be in excellent position. Because the Cardinals haven't been able to generate any offense. Uh, very bad offensive performance so far by the Cardinals. Bob Cousil was the man who threw the key block on that first down run by Riggins. Cousil at 6'5", 225. You know, the thing about this Washington offensive line, Sonny, is they hit the weights in the offseason, didn't they? They strengthened themselves. They're more physical than they were. They feel that's a big, been a big part of this. It says by going to the weight training program. On the 39, first down. Riggins again. Nothing fancy right now. They're just coming right at him. Riggins to the 37, pick up a three. Ron Yankowski making the tackle. Up all the third quarter scores, Gary. Houston leading Oakland 21 to 14. And Miami still shutting out Baltimore 16 to nothing. That's in the third quarter. Well, that'd be super back-to-back -back wins for Houston, beating Miami and turn right around and beat Oakland. So Oakland's got five straight points in. There's Jack Party. Got to be pleased with the way things are going right now for him. Boy, he did a great job in Chicago, and now he's moved his show over to Washington, and he has him playing very, very well. Second down eight, Theismann back. And trying to make the catch is Bugs at the 25. Bugs, who made two big catches in that drive that ended the first half, couldn't quite hang on to that one. Bugs had a great game against Atlanta earlier this year, coming up with 10 catches for 134 yards. The wide receivers, there's a couple of articles this week about uh, not getting any balls thrown to him, and uh, Joe must have read that article. He's gone to him quite often today. Third down and eight. Cardinals would like to hold here. Roy Green comes in as they have five defensive backs. Also in there is Lee Nelson. Heisman back. Flag on the play. He hits Ike Forte. Forte very close to the first down. But a flag back around Joe Theismann. Ben Drive, the referee indicating holding against Washington. Forte, I believe, had that first down on the run. But now they'll bring it back. Boy, does that hurt when you pick up a first down. You get third and long, and you make a play as a quarterback, and you deliver the ball, pick up the first down, and say, uh-oh, you got to do it <laughs> farther back now. Boy, it's getting colder here. At kickoff time, it was 52 degrees, but it isn't close to that now, is it? Offense holding number 64. Okay, our spotter Jason Trinsky pointed that out to us earlier. Ron Saul, number 64. Saul's been playing with a bad ankle. Just a couple of starting assignments. This will be the eighth play in this drive. Washington with good ball control. Started from their own 39 after the interception by Lamar Parrish. Heisman back. And that will bring up a fourth down. And he bugs the intended receiver. So the Cardinals have been able to hold, and that was a big defensive play by St. Louis because a touchdown there might have taken him out of the game. Ball got away from uh, Joe then. Uh, that was the same type of pattern that he threw in the uh, first half to Bucks twice, and he had him open. See him going over it right there with Joe Walt and the offensive coordinator. Willard Harrell back for this kick from Mike Bragg. 6.33 in the third quarter. A lot of time left in this game. Cardinals trailing by 10. He's going to try to hit the corner. Beautiful spiraling kick, and he is going to like that one. 
if they can get down there. They cannot. That ball died. Monty Coleman tried to keep it in the field of play. It makes it in for the touchback. And so the Cardinals from the 20 yard line will set it up for the third time in the second half after that 47 yard kick. Where's Merlin? Where did it go? Janie's got a play in tic tac toe. Now where's Merlin? When last seen, it was out with Dad playing blackjack. 13. Where's Merlin now? It's not there. It's out with Billy playing magic square. Merlin is a computer with person. A sports car for the 80s. Gal, we're stepping out tonight. Melvin, is that you? Yep. Yes. Next Saturday, the CBS Sports Spectacular features the Mr. Universe Bodybuilding Championship, the Battle of the NFL Cheerleaders, and the Memorial World Open. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Gary Bender with Sonny Jurgensen. Six minutes, 22 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Cardinals down by 10 points. They have the football, first down at the 20. Wayne Morris, Otis Anderson behind this man, Jim Hart. Al Gray comes in motion. Jim Hart has suffered two interceptions today, and he has another one by Parrish. His second of the day. Lamar Parrish picks it up. He now has nine for the year. And what a year this guy is having. Unbelievable that you continue to throw the ball against him. Why throw the football against Lamar Parrish? I don't know. I would pick somebody up to throw at. Watch this. What a great play he makes here. They have a motion. A motion was coming across until he cuts back across the middle. And Parrish, again, just steals the football. What a Look play, at, though. Look at oh, that. What a great play. Man. That's a major league move. I can't. I'm just like you, Sonny. I, I don't understand why they keep going at 24. <laughs> you got me. I'll well, tell you what, that's their fourth turnover of the day. The one thing they want the to year. avoid. Here's Riggins. Riggins to the 21 yard line. Bob Pollard making the stop. Almost had a bad exchange. What's this exchange right here between Theismann and Riggins? It's like he just slips a little bit. Yep. <laughs> Rickinson may have taken a little outside course on him. Man shaking up. That's who is that that's down? We'll check it for you as soon as we possibly can. Well, four turnovers. The Cardinals now with 34 for the year. Gee. And on the other hand, this Washington Redskin team has 35 takeovers this year. They they're just amazing the way their defense plays. You got to give them some credit. You can't. Just keep saying if the Cardinals aren't doing things right, that last play was a heck of a play by Parrish. You realize Parrish isn't 100%? He was out. He didn't realize that he was going to play today. I asked him coming in the tunnel right before the game. I said, are you healthy enough to play? He's playing with one of those uh, flight jackets on to guard his ribs. He has some bruised ribs. He ought to play with bruised ribs more often, huh? Yeah. Two interceptions, nine a year now. Now, as I said, Reinfeld of Houston had nine coming into the day. So he's at least tied... Les Reinfeld picked off one of that Houston game. That's Jeff Williams. A big second year man, an offensive guard out of Rhode Island who has really been a pleasant surprise this year for Washington. Well, he's a good young football player. It's a surprise he scored, Gary. The Rams leading the Bears in the second quarter, 16 to nothing. Jeff Rutledge has to be his first professional touchdown pass. Rookie out of Alabama, Fred Dean has replaced Jeff Williams at offensive guard. Riggins in the backfield now on a second and eight from the 21. Play action, Theismann to McDaniel. McDaniel to the 15, to the 12, first down. Washington with a first down as Rod Saul and Terry Hermeline really got out there to convoy him down to the 12. Boy, when you can, when you're playing this type of football and you're getting the ball turned over to you this way, there's that score, 16 to nothing in the second. When you're getting it turned over to you this way, Oh, it's fun to play offensive football. You can do anything you like. Nine yard pickup on the play to the 12 yard line. 17 to 7. The Redskins would like to really put the clamps on this one. Mark McDaniel, the wide receiver. Minutes remaining in the third quarter. Heisman back. 
broken up. Perry Smith intended for John McDaniel. Perry Smith, the man who started in place of Carl Allen, and he was there. Not a real good pattern this time. Ball could have been intercepted very easily this time. Joe kind of drifting out to his right again, pumping, trying to get McDaniel going back to the corner. He has good protection, good pass blocking this time, but you see how close Smith was to making an interception. Harry Smith, who started for so many years for the Green Bay Packers, he had three interceptions last year in one game. He was playing safety against the Detroit Lions. Bugs, Ricky Thompson, the wide receivers. Second down, 10 from the 12. Benny Malone to the 10, and he straightened up there. Gain of two, it'll be third down. Mark Arneson, 57. Arneson in his second week of play after being out five weeks with knee problems. Armin Forte now come in at the running back spots as John Riggins will check out. Malone in this game has 57 yards on 12 carries as he comes off the field. Each team changed three players. Cardinals going to their nickel defense expecting a pass here. And also the Redskins coming in with their passing team. The Cardinals would like to make him settle for a field goal attempt. Third down and eight from the 10 yard line. Deisman. And that one he just had to throw. Ricky Thompson wasn't even close to the ball. Perry Smith was the closest. It just wasn't anybody open on that play. He, he threw the ball away. He was just trying to hope that uh, Thompson might come up with a catch, but he threw it behind him. He didn't want to get sacked and back up some, so they will settle for a field goal try here. Here he comes. Mark Mosley, one for one. 46-yard earlier today. And this is going to be a 28, well, about a 27-yard attempt. Holding will be Theismann. Mosley to 16 of 21 for the year. And Mosley with a very, very precise style of kicking has just added three more points. It's 20 to 7. The Washington Redskins adding to their advantage. We have 4-0-1 left in the third quarter. When Napa first made the claim that lots of Napa parts are better than your car's original parts, some folks were skeptical. Better than the original? Better than the original? Better than the original. So before we could make that claim on TV, we were told to do one small thing. Prove it! So we did. Lots of Napa parts are better than your car's original parts. So visit your Napa Auto Parts store. Napa. We help keep America moving. The reason 7-Up asked me to be the spokesman for their Super 2 sweepstakes because is because, my, because name of is my name is Hollywood. Because the big prize is $50,000 on a trip or two to the Super Bowl to see me. Now, Hayden, he thought winning the sweepstakes was the only way he'd get to the Super Bowl. He can't enter. You can't. Just get sweepstakes details at this display where you see me. When you go Hollywood, you lose all semblance of reality. No, it, I'll be there. No, no, you'll be watching me this no, year. No, no. no. Mark Mosley, who just kicked a 27-yard field goal, will boot it off. Harold and Green back for the Cardinals. It's 20-7. We're going to be checking a lot of scores after this kickoff. A lot of interesting things happening in week number 11. Mosley drying off the toe of his shoe. Well, he takes care of that. And he two for two today. A 46-yarder and a 27-yard field goal. Mr. Automatic. Now, this is the first time he's really gotten one up high. He's been squirting it. Willard Harrell has it inside the 10-yard line. Harrell out to the 20. He'll make it to the 23-yard line. Monty Coleman made the stop, but now let's check those scores. Detroit leading Tampa Bay. 14 to 6. Look at Miami over Baltimore. 16 to nothing. Greasy having a good day. Jets trailing Buffalo. Pittsburgh, they continue to mount their advantage. Way unbelievable. So strong. Cleveland is, uh, look at this. Houston still leading Oakland 21 14. Big game. And look at San Diego. They trailed 14 to nothing earlier that's in that up. game. That's going to be a good finish to that one. Back we go here on a first down to Otis Anderson, and he has at least three burgundy jerseys over there, led by Carl Lorch. His forward progress just across the 25 yard line. Let's check some other scores. Seattle and Cleveland. Well, they were trailing 16 to nothing. And uh, what is it, 16-14 now? 
I have a different score on that. I have 17-16. Look at that Rams score. leading the Bears 16-0. Behind rookie Jeff Rutledge. Second down, five. A pickup of five by Anderson. Prior to that last play, the Cardinals had 40 plays for 126 yards. That's just a little over three yards a play. They've had to work for everything they've got. Back to throw Hart. And that ball, there's a flag on the play. I don't know who that was thrown to. Olkowitz got a hand on it. I did not see a Cardinal receiver around the ball. Cardinal receiver was not around the ball, but uh, we're going to have a uh, some type of flag is down. Legal motion. Oh, oh. Boy, when it rains, it pours, huh? Boy, they just can't do anything right now. They can't get untracked offensively. Give credit to the Redskins. You know what this game is doing, don't you? It's heating up the controversy at quarterback again. There was a couple of weeks ago, a lot said and written about that Steve Pazarkowicz should be the quarterback. Jim came back. Illegal motion on the offense, number 62, decline a penalty, that's third down. Jim came back last week, played very well, and now today he's had some tough sledding. As a former quarterback, do you have any opinions? Well, I tell you, you don't like days like this when you can't find the right answers to the secondary and can't find, call the right pattern. Look, if somebody else can do the job better, put them in by all means. Third and five. Broke it up. That looks like Coy Bacon. Coy Bacon batted it down. Let's look at it and be sure that it was number 79. May beat Coy Bacon coming in from the UC Perry Brooks, number 69 rushing. He cannot throw the ball. It's just good coverage. You see Brooks jump. Who was it? I think it's Monty Coleman that sure got in was. front of him. Number 51, Monty Coleman coming on a blitz. You notice it? he's playing more and more, isn't he? They get him in there on those passing downs. Little to kick. He'll kick from the 10-yard line. 3.03 to go in this third quarter. Clarence Harmon is back for the skins. Rush put on by McDaniel. Lazy kick to the 40, and here comes Harmon. And he's going to make it to the Cardinal 48-yard line. Tom Brahaney, who snapped the ball down there to make the tackle. And now we have an update and a correction on the score, yeah. I guess. We had 16-14. They did, Cleveland did come from behind. It was 16-10. They scored a touchdown on a Mike Pruitt one-yard touchdown. It's 17-16 now. That's called survival there. It's getting colder. It's rain throughout the game. 32-yard punt that time. A 10-yard return by Clarence Harmon. At the 49 of St. Louis, 20-7, the Redskins with the lead. Heisman to Bugs. Bugs waiting on his blockers. And he makes it to the 45-yard line. Perry Smith over there to make the stop along with John Barefield. And tonight, be sure to start your evening with a brand new edition of 60 Minutes. Then the laughs are on the house. Archie Bunker's place. And there's more great comedy on One Day at a Time, followed by Alice and the Jeffersons. Then Fernell Roberts stars as Trapper John, M.D. Trapper John, huh? All that's tonight. Looks like Benny Malone and Charlie Davis having a discussion going on down there on the football field. Changing some pleasantries. <laughs> Second down and seven for the Redskins. This is Malone. And Malone is to the 41-yard line. We have a flag on the play. Chicago has scored in that game against Los Angeles. Mike Phipps, a seven-yard pass to Dave Williams for their first score. We have a tackling by face mask against the Cardinals, so that will give Washington a first down. Thompson comes out. Danny Bugs checks in. Defense grabbing the face mask. Five-yard penalty. That's a first down. I tell you, the defense getting kind of muddy out there. They've been on the field a lot for St. Louis. Been out there a long time. Offense not giving him any help. Mike Forte has come in at running back for Washington on a first down from the 36-yard line. Theismann in the round, reverse is fake. He faked it. And here comes Theismann. Complete to Reagan. Reagan to 30, to the 25. He has a first down to the 20-yard line. Well, that's a new wrinkle. Yes, he was in a good play. Very smart play by Joe Theismann that time. He felt the pressure coming from behind. He wanted to stand and throw the ball. It wasn't designed to roll out. He felt the pressure. Watch this. He sees it after he fakes. He catches the man coming over his shoulder. And he just does that automatically to get back out of there. 
And as he comes back, he finds John Riggins just checking down a little bit. Doesn't try to force anything. Just a soft little throw to Riggins. Riggins makes a good run, takes it down inside of the 20-yard line. Eisman showing that mobility. He had Dawson breathing down his neck, but got away from him. First down at the 20, Benny Malone, and he gets loose. Fairfield had him momentarily. And then Mark Arneson finished it off and yet another flag on the play. Good reaction by both linebackers that time. A loss, but let's see what the flag does to the end result. Explanation. Redskins are indicating it's against St. Louis. Huh. Personal foul against the Cardinals. Now well, let's see, the Redskins had three earlier. By the way, did you know that the Cardinals lead the National Football League in personal foul? That's it's called frustration, isn't it? I think that's exactly right. Let's see who this is on. That's a personal foul. Unnecessary roughness number 55. That's a first down. That's Eric Williams. And so it's first and goal now at the 10-yard line. 107 to go in the third quarter. It's been a long third quarter for St. Louis. The Redskins have been hammering at him all third quarter long. Thompson McDaniel split out. Rod John Riggins. Riggins to the five. Look at him carry a tackle with it. A tackle was Ken Stone. He's inside the five. It'll be second and goal. Or just a slant, the same play they scored on. Just a slant, you see good blocking up front. And John just finds a little seam, splits through, and then you see the strength of a John Riggins. Good, powerful legs driving, takes it inside of the five yard line. Riggins, 56 yards on 15 carries. Well, if the Redskins win today, they're going to win the game tomorrow night with a lot of interest, aren't they? Dallas and Philadelphia. Dallas comes here next Sunday. There's the penalty for this game. Second and goal, they have the ball at the three-yard line. Riggins and Harmon, the running backs. Betty Malone with the carry. And he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all because Bob Pollard, number 82, was there. So it's a third and goal. Heisman looking this situation over. Crowd here getting a little upset, you know, saying, wait a second, let's don't do I think we're going to run out of the quarter time here. We'll get a good call from the sideline. And so that will be the end of the third quarter with the score. The Washington Redskins 20, the St. Louis Cardinals 7. We now pause for a word from your local station. Well, there's the situation. The ball at the four-yard line as we start the fourth quarter of play. The Redskins with a 20-7 lead. Riggins, Harmon, Malone, the three running backs behind Joe Theismann. Heisman trying to get some quiet. Now they split Warren out. They split Malone out. Only one set running back. That's Riggins. Heisman back to throw. It's intended for Riggins. Touchdown. John Riggins caught that ball for the touchdown. But wait a minute. We have a flag on the play. I think it's going to be on the line back. He was holding Riggins coming out. Yes, sir. That's what it is. Heisman all excited. He really had a nice touch on that football. Holding defense number 57. Decline the penalty. Touchdown. That's Mark Arneson who was guilty of that penalty. Take a look at this. They, they go to a trips formation, overload one side with a lot of personnel, and Riggins gets single coverage on a linebacker. And Theismann, very nice touch, lofting the ball over. That's got to make John Riggins feel real good because he's the man they take out. He's a good receiver, and they take him out to put in their passing team. Boy, he's really having a good day. As for him, that is his second touchdown catch of the year. He had 15 coming into the day, and there is the man who's Mr. Automatic going to try a point after. <laughs> 26-7 as we had the first play of the fourth quarter. Just executed. Mosley got that one underway. A line drive that time, but it's good. It's 27-7 as he keeps that string alive of consecutive point afters. We'll be back as we still have one quarter left to play. Introducing the best gas mileage ratings of any mid-sized wagon. Aren't you glad you bought a Fairmont? The right idea for today. 
Introducing the biggest cargo area of any mid-sized wagon built in America. Aren't you glad you bought a Fairmont? Introducing the lowest sticker price of any mid-sized wagon. The 1980 Ford Fairmont wagons got it all. Aren't you glad you bought a Fairmont? Glad. 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 The right idea for today. From the people who brought you the workmate comes the incredible bench top. You can put it on a table or clamp it to a chair or use it on the roof or almost anywhere. It goes up in the attic or the basement down below. There's almost no place the bench top I won't go. Black & Decker's Bench Top Workmate, portable work center and vice. It turns the whole world into a workshop. Well, you can see it continues to rain at RFK Stadium, but if you're a Redskins fan, I think you're warmed up a little bit by the score. As the Redskins lead it 27-7, Mark Mosley just hit his 52nd straight PAT. He's kicked two field goals, and he's getting ready to kick off to Harold and Green, deep for the Cardinals. There's that characteristic kick of his, very high. Green will take it. Green had a 106-yard return against Dallas. Does a pretty good job. Brings it out to the 42-yard line. And Ted Frisch, who was shaking up earlier in the game, down to make the stop for the Washington Redskins. Monday night on CBS starts with a dramatic episode of The White Shadow, starring Ken Howard. Then an hour of great comedy begins with MASH and continues with WKRP in Cincinnati. And Ed Asner stars as Lou Grant, all on CBS Monday night. Talking about this weather, Gary, the Redskins for years have always called this Redskin weather when it's bad weather. I believe it. Jim Hart stays in at quarterback, delivers the ball to Morrell. He can't hang on. And so you're looking at a show right there, frustration. Nothing done on offense today. What are his stats now, Gary? We'll catch him for you. Jim Hart's stats, not something he's going to want to talk about. A ball at the 42. As Marty Arnoff, our statistician, indicates he's 4 of 16 for 27 yards and three interceptions. Oh, cool. 16, 16. Tilly Gray, the wide receiver. Little delay to Wayne Morris. And Morris dances to the 45-yard line. It'll be third down, still six yards to go. Dyron Talbert, 35-year-old man out of the University of Texas, made that tackle. Bacon's 36, Talbert is 35. They have played some football as well as anybody. A couple of second quarter scores. Green Bay leading Minnesota 13 to nothing. San Francisco trailing New Orleans 24 to three. That's in the second quarter. Well, Houston has built its lead up to 28 to 14 over Oakland. I think the Saints right now might be the best or most improved team in the NFC. Here's Hart. He had a pass on its way to Wayne Morris and Morris would have had a first down if he could have held on to that one. And it brings up fourth down. Brad Dusick defending on the play. See, that's a frustration. Boy, you make a good throw. He made an excellent throw here. Had the ball right out in front of Morris. And when he's made good throws, still not able to connect. Look at this. Right in his hands. That's what happened, boy. It just goes bad. There's nothing you can do to turn it around. I think that's a good point. That stat will not be indicated as one. Oh, wait a minute. They're faking a the punt. And a bad pass, but it got the job done. Roy Green makes the catch. That ball was a floating duck on the near sideline, but Steve Little pulled it off. He did that against Houston this year, and it worked. And they faked the punt and come away with the first down. Jim Hart throws a bullet, can't get a completion. Steve Little loses the ball, just kind of lost it up in the air. It's an end over end pass, an option pass. You catch it on either end, and he gets a completion. That is something. Well, earlier this year, in a situation, a game the Cardinals won against Houston, he threw off of a fake punt, and they went on to win the game. Isn't that a remarkable contrast, though? You have a beautiful pass, and then you get one that looks awful that gets the job done. Here's an end round reverse to Mel Gray. Gray, they're strung out pretty well, not fooled by it, but Gray's doing a pretty good job of carrying the ball to the 35-yard line, a gain of five. Pete Wysocki, Brad Dusick. I think the Redskins were looking for that play at some time because they had that one diagnosed pretty well. I think they've seen the Cardinals do that before. You know, you go back and look at that Steve Little pass. That was ugly, wasn't it? 
Is that an ugly pass? Is that one of those they used to <laughs> kid about Billy Kilmer pass where you could had an option to catch either end of it? That's exactly right. There you go. Miami still shutting out the Colts, 19 to nothing. That's in the fourth now. On the 35, Hart back to throw. Cardinals with a new life. He completes it to Pat Tilly, and that will be another first down. All at the 25-yard line. And guess who he's throwing against again? Number 24. <laughs> Lamar Paris. He's going to go there, and he said, you're going to have to prove me. You can catch them all, Lamar. Good pattern that time. Good catch, good reception. First down. Tilly, who had one catch earlier, nullified by a penalty, has one now to the 25-yard line. He never told me Hart was stubborn. <laughs> that was Tilly's first catch. He has 30 for the year. Number 25, first down. Boy Bacon putting the pressure on. Bill Morrell. That drop. Neil Oakwood's depending on the play, but again, that was a catchable football. Oakwood's may have gotten a hand on it. Buffalo leading the Jets 14 to 12. It's in the fourth period now. Pittsburgh 23 to 3. Mm. Kansas City went in there four and six. After their fast start, they've fallen on hard times. Joe Jones now and Perry Brooks have come in defensively. Tony Peters also in for Washington. Second down, 10 from the 25. One other fourth quarter score very quickly. Cincinnati leading San Diego 21-16. On a second and 10. Hart with time. Throwing. 10 receiver Jim Childs at the goal line. Back there was Tony Peters. You know, Peters has really been a fine acquisition for this football team. Check that that's Ken Houston back there. But Peters, I started to say, has played corner. He's played safety. They got him from Cleveland. He was unhappy, and they got him for a fifth-round draft pick. If Jim had kept that ball in bounds, then he'd have had a touchdown because Houston was looking deep. The ball was under throw, but if it had just kept it in bounds, it had a touchdown. Third down, 10 from the 25. Hart now 5 of 20 for 37 yards. Osborne, the tight end. Has come in replacing Bill Morrell. Hart, that is Osborne. Osborne, who was a starter last year for the Philadelphia Eagles after Keith Crefley went out for the year. Mark Murphy defending on the play, and it's fourth down. He had him open. He just overthrew him. Osborne was added to the team last week when Gary Paris, their starting tight end, was hurt in a drill. And so Osborne playing along with Bill Morrell, and that tight end spot has just haunted the Cardinals this year, starting, of course, with the untimely death to J.B. King. But they had 11 starters go out at one time or another this year. At least missed one game, yeah. Fourth down, as the Cardinals somehow are going to try to keep this going. A blitz. And Hart doesn't have a chance. Boy Bacon. Brad Dusick was the guy that was coming on the blitz. And the Cardinals have turned it over on downs at the 35. Good coverage, and you see the blitz coming. Watch it develop here. Nobody picks up Dusick. He's running free right here. Hart ducks him, comes out of this. It looks like he's going to be able to get the ball off. But just as he gets ready to unload it again, Coy Bacon shows up. The Cardinals now have given up 22 sacks in 1979. Thunderbird, Thunderbird. Spread your wings in the new 1980 Thunderbird. Introducing a Thunderbird of new contemporary size that shows its elegant heritage wherever you look. Outside, inside. Yet it's remarkably priced. And that includes automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, vinyl roof, and more. The new size Thunderbird, a better idea for the 80s. When you break horses for a living and you do it wrong, they can break you first. But when you do it right, you can turn a terrified animal into a horse a man can count on. And now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time. If you've got the time. We've got the beer. Miller Beer. Next Sunday on CBS Sports, NFL action continues with regional games, a super Sunday of football. You'll say, 
You saw it on CBS Sports. Jack Pardee, I think, is the only one out on the field that doesn't have a hat on his head. Somebody was kidding about maybe he thinks it's going to make his hair grow. The rain <laughs> continues to fall on it. I'm going to tell Jack he said that. <laughs> From the 34, first down. Benny Malone gets little or nothing on that development to the 35-yard line. Chris Garlic, who's a rookie out of the University of Missouri, made the stop, and Seattle leading in the fourth quarter. Al Hunter, five-yard run there. Seattle goes back in front. Still can't believe they were shut out last week. We have a final. Buffalo beat the Jets 14 to 12. Buffalo's had a lot of injuries this year. Second down, nine yards. There comes a blitz by Ken Green. Weisman, far side to Bugs. Danny Bugs out of bounds. Kenny Green coming on that end. The line picked it up pretty well. Bugs having a pretty good day for the Redskins. Either Theismann audible to the quick out that time had a, a read on the blitz because he had the perfect play call, a little quick out, high percentage throws, and you see the blitz coming there. Alleman coming in, just a two-step drop, delivers the ball right on the target. Third catch of the day for Bugs for 32 yards from the 38-yard line. Third down, seven. Cardinals. Fairfield is pointing. He says that he moved because Forte moved. We'll <laughs> see. Everybody's pointing fingers at each other. That's right. They have three flags, so there's a lot of guilty people out there, it looks like. If they let that play go, Fairfield was going to get there early. <laughs> the illegal procedure. Theismann asking who, why, what. So they'll step off five yards. Got a score? Houston. That's off. Offense, quarterback bobbing his head. <laughs> you ever That's have right. that called on you? Yes. Well, we were allowed to do that. Yeah. Uh, we were allowed to do that. They've changed that rule because you can intentionally draw people offside with a with a staggered cadence. And movement of your head. Bad movement, yes. Third down, 12 after the penalty. Eisman with Pollard putting pressure on. He gets away. Heisman, and is that complete or trap? Coming up was Ike Forte. I believe they're going to really trap the football. I think he got it on one hop. Yep. I tell you, Theismann has shown me all year long that he can really move. He gets out of there and runs extremely well. Watch it. It looks like he's going to get sacked here. And uh, again, his ability to escape the rush. You see Dawson got him dead to rights right there. He rolls out on him. Uh, Yankowski was back there also. Now Davis has to chase him, and that's a mismatch. <laughs> with, with the Heisman running, you see Green coming up there, but it all got on the ground. And Bragg on fourth down kicks away to Willard Harrell. Harrell at the 35. 40-yard line, and Harrell brings it out to the 44. Neil Wolfowitz made the stop, and we have another play. Harrell coming into this game has been very effective as a punt returner third in the NFC has the longest punt return of the year in the NFC of 68 yards nine yard return 32 yard kick that time by Mike Bragg got an update on that uh, Houston Oakland game is 28 17 now Houston leading Oakland and have a personal foul I believe against St. Louis Ben Dreif to tell it unnecessary roughness on a receiving team number 38 that's Lee Nelson he can find Lee Nelson here. What happens? Nelson uh, trying to throw a block here for Harrell. Uh, he hasn't done anything unnecessarily rough so far. Still hasn't done anything. He has a little push here. Oops, a little push back. And now you retaliate, and that's when you get caught. That's Don Harris who's having a little altercation with him. We'll be back with 11.44 left to play. If anyone looks forward to the start of a new day, it's a Big A Auto Parts store because each new day is filled with challenging customer requests for quality parts and friendly service. Take yesterday, for example.
Got an oil filter for a Ferrari. Do you hook the black one to the plus or minus? I need heavy-duty shocks. A muffler for a Merc. Boy, have you got metric tools. Quality parts, friendly service. That's big A. Have you got a cup of coffee? Sure. The hard-working auto parts store. I'd like to talk to you about the Sony Betamax and an incredible feature called Betascan. I'm Tom Williams, Sr. And if you know tennis, you know my son. Here's a cassette of his last championship match. Betascan lets me go fast forward in reverse so I can skip the boring stuff like this long rally and stop when I come to the real exciting parts like Tom Jr. here dashing onto the court to pick up the ball. Isn't Betamax terrific? It lets you see what you've been missing and miss what you don't want to see. It's from Sony, the one and only. 44 left to go as we have a first down for the 29 yard line for the Cardinals. Jim Hart, there's his effort for the day. On a first down. Gets it off, complete to Theotis Brown. And Brown across the 40 has a first down to the 45 yard line. Olkowitz making the tackle. And so the Cardinals pick up some yardage in a hurry. Just a little out and pass. The uh, Cardinals used to do a lot of this. Just a little he, secondary receiver out in the flat. Checks it off. Just got the ball off. And boy, you got a big load to get down when you got somebody that big out there running with a football behind some blocking. You see what a job it is to get him down. The Otis Brown is an excellent receiver. He can catch the ball as well as anybody on this football team. He had 12 catches coming into the game. There's a little misdirection play a give to Theotis Brown and Brown to the 49 yard line again it's Neil Olkowitz making the tackle Olkowitz is four straight start today we have a lot of booing going on we have a man on the far side who's over there trying to act like a cheerleader and I mean act <laughs> he wasn't even closely approaching that style second down now eight pick up of two <laughs> they're escorting him away I don't believe he feels a thing. <laughs> Mel hey, Gray. It's cold out here. <laughs> Mel Gray, Pat Tilly, blanked out on a second and eight. Boy Bacon. And the catch is made by Mel Gray. And with that catch, Gray keeps his streak alive. He now has caught at least one pass in 84 straight. Oh, what a job Jim Hart does this time. Look at the pressure. Redskins just teeing off now, coming on the rush. They know that the only way the Cardinals can get back in this game, Bacon takes a swipe at him. He just frees himself there and takes the punishment after he delivers the ball. And as you said, Mr. Gray makes a nice reception. That was a heck of a play. And now we have another penalty and yardage being tacked onto that game. Let's see what it is. Okay, Ben, if you're in good voice. Personal foul, roughing the quarterback defense, number 65. First down. That's Dave Butts, his former teammate. Oh, come on, Dave. Don't pick on quarterbacks like that. And Jim's had a long day. Here he comes in right here, delivers the ball. I don't know. I, I don't know if, uh, you know, it's a questionable call. It was a right call for Jim Hart. He's had a long afternoon. First down from the 16. Otis Anderson dancing outside to the 10, and he goes inside the five-yard line. Monty Coleman knocks him out. First carry he's had in a long time. Good run that time. Pittsburgh, Terry Bradshaw threw a one-yard pass to Larry Brown, their right tackle, for a touchdown. <laughs> Can you believe that? Houston leading now 31 to 17. Really doing it. That surprises me. That does in Cincinnati leading San Diego. 21-16. First and goal for the Cardinals at the four-yard line. Anderson, 92 yards now. He has five 100-yard days. Record for a rookie in the NFL is seven. He has a very good chance of eclipsing that record before it's all over. At the four, 10-05 left the Cardinals trying to salve some wounds here with a touchdown. Brown. Anderson, the running backs. That's Gray in motion. Anderson. And there's a flag as he makes it to the two. The ball is loose. And I believe Washington recovered, but was a ball dead. We're still waiting for the officials to indicate which way it's headed. Ball was loose. I believe it might have been blown dead. Let's see. They're going to have a penalty regardless. 
offside against Washington. Boy, that, uh, That's where our game started with Anderson in that same area, fumbled the ball, remember, went into the end zone on the first series of the game. You will decline the fumble and take the penalty here, huh? I think you're right. Ben Grice has been a busy man in this game. Boy, the Bears have come back against Los Angeles, trailing 16 to nothing in the third quarter now. They trail 16 to 14 now. Defense offside. First down. So there was not a fumble, no indication of that whatsoever. Well, the, the penalty would uh, precede that uh, the fumble. At, From Anderson's standpoint, though, I'm sure he's glad to know <laughs> that it was not another fumble. That's right. Brown and Anderson, the running backs. Also back there is Wayne Moore. First and goal to two. Here is Wayne Morris. Touchdown. Wayne Morris going in for his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. And Neil Olkowitz made the tackle, but it's 27-13. Let's take a look at this. Wayne Morris does this very well. We've seen him dive before over the top. I give him a six. I think the Russian judge gave him a two. 27-13. Steve Little with the point after attempt. Early to hold. Long time to go in this football game, isn't it? That's right. And Little's kick is good. 27 to 14 now. 9.50. Well, wonder if the Cardinals will try an onside kick. But they're still with 9.50 left. Still an issue to be decided. How many times have you wanted to pack it all in and take off? Well, with Hertz economy fares, the time to go is now. Our subcompacts are only $14.95 a day, weekends, and just $98 a week. All with free mileage. Larger cars are only dollars more a day. And if you rent for three weekdays or more, Hertz has special economy fares for that, too. Hertz economy fares. Now you can't afford not to rent from number one. How long do you want your car to last? Forever. Now, don't laugh. She's already gone over 90,000 miles and without a major engine repair. I try to take good care of her. I give her regular checkups, and the only motor oil I ever use is Quaker State. Quaker State can't promise everyone mileage like Mr. Miles gets, but Quaker State helps cars last, and that's a fact. I guess that's why Quaker State's the best-selling motor oil in America. On the CBS Tuesday night movie, vandals invade the sanctity of a divorced woman's life. Joanne Woodward is the victim, determined to get justice on the streets of L.A. There's the story, the time and the score. The Redskins anticipating an onside kick here by Steve Little. And he's going to cross him up and kick it deep. Only one man is back as Forte, and it'll make it into the end zone. So the Cardinals figure there's still some time, and you made a very good point a while ago, Sonny. Even though it's been a long afternoon, you got to give Jim Hart credit on that last drive. He stuck it in there. He stayed with it. He's demonstrating a lot of courage because he has. I mean, he's had a tough afternoon, but uh, you know, 9:40 still left in the football game. A lot of things can happen. Make a big play, make a turnover, get a fumble or anything. Where they're back in the football game in a hurry, and give Jim Hart a lot of credit. Malone and Riggins are running backs from the 20-yard line. Malone, Malone comes out across the 20 to the 25-yard line. Eric Williams over there. And that's a five-yard pickup for Malone. Malone's going to have his best day before it's all over. It's 65 yards is a high for the season. And now has 67 on 16 carries. So his best performance of the year. If you're tired of television stories about ghetto kids, persuaded that they're hopeless, convinced that no way are they going to make it, 60 Minutes has a big surprise for you. Sunday, tonight, at 7 o'clock. There's Theismann to Riggins. And Riggins to the 39, and it's going to be a third down and a yard to go. Bob Pollard, 82, made the tackle. This is what Washington uh, would like to keep the ball on the ground and keep that clock moving. And the Cardinals really have to get a turnover here and force him to put it up, force a fumble. Look at Warren. Where's he been? Have to send his uniform home to the laundry, huh? 
change defensively for the Cardinals. Garlic is coming out of the game. Ron Yankowski checks in. Third down, a yard. Riggins, Malone, and Harmon, all three of them in that backfield. Cardinals would like to hold here, and that play is going to backfire. What a play by Ken Stone, and I'm surprised they went wide on a third and one. On a reverse, I'm surprised that they called myself. Unusual call for third down. You fake to the deep back, and then you've got Harmon coming back the other way. No one was fooled on the play. Good play this time. Kenny Stone. A six-yard loss, and Sonny, right now the Cardinals have a chance to make a game out of this one. 27-14 the score. Here's Bragg kicking a beautiful kick. They're going to get away from it, though, or are they? That's Roy Green catching the ball <laughs> with a man on top of him, that man being Monty Coleman. Well, he got away with it. The Cardinals have excellent field position at their own 45-yard line. One-yard return after a 34-yard kick that time. The Cardinals have the football. You don't move mountains, you go through them. And all it takes to carve a tunnel out of a mile of hard rock is steel and sweat and dynamite. Now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And a tune-up done right would have solved the problem I had one night. I came home late with my car running rough, made a bang and a whistle and a weave and a bump. Woke up my kids and my lazy old dog. Woke up my wife who sleeps like a log. I was really up a creek without a raft. I need some help from Motorcraft. Got a tune-up and plugs with a Motorcraft name. My car ran smoother and my family got sane. And now when it's late, I drive to the door. Life's a lot sweeter, for sure. Motorcraft, for sure. Let's check some scores, Sonny, throughout the NFL. Seattle and Cleveland. 29-17. Have a little different score. I have 22-17. We'll have to check that again. Los, Los Angeles, Angeles, Chicago. They got another score. Wendell Tyler with a 65-yard run. He's been hurt. And Green Bay doing it to Minnesota again. 24-6. That's in the third period. Surprising. Minnesota won that first game in overtime. Wait a minute. Flags everywhere. Keith Wartman kind of set back on his haunches a little bit. And Ford Bacon. Ball start on the offense, number 62. You know, many people have probably wondered why Bud was staying with Jim Hart. But he hadn't given up on this football game. And his perseverance may really be, you know, reinforced here. They're still in this football game with 7.44 left. All he needs is a big play. But they have a first and 15 now after that penalty. Hard back, Bacon putting pressure on. Hart throws a ball to Pat Tilly. Tilly is to the 40, and that's a first down. And Hart threw that ball as Coy Bacon had made contact with him. A 19-yard pickup, and that might be the play you were talking about. It's amazing. He got as much on the football as he did when he goes back. Watch the rush he's on. It looks like he may not get the thing off. And he's not going to be able to get anything on the ball because Bacon has a left, big left arm on the back of him. And look, you see the ball doesn't have everything on it, but he makes a good throw, a very accurate one. And this crowd now anticipating that this isn't over yet. Give to Otis Anderson. Anderson the 35. Lowers his head, and he's close to the 30-yard line and close to another first down. Neil Okowitz over there. And there's still 7.02 left. And I would imagine at this moment, Jack Pardee is getting a little bit nervous. You can imagine if they score, especially, and get the extra point, because that would cut it to six. Well, that point's a big point, isn't it? There's Detroit still leading Tampa Bay. Isn't that something? 14-9, that's in the fourth. Neil O'Donoghue, I see, got a field goal. And this is some game, isn't it? Yes, it is. Cincinnati, 24-16. By the way, that last run moved Anderson over 100 yards for the day, his sixth 100-yard day. Theotis Brown carries to the 26-yard line. Oakland made the stop. So, Otis Anderson, sixth 100-yard day. Went over 100. You, this is the longest and toughest hundred this year. But that's, uh, that shows me something about him. He is a real battler. There he is. Rookie out of Miami of Florida. The eighth pick in the first round. Hard back to throw and a in trouble. And well, 
Bobby Coleman. And Ken Houston putting the pressure on. I don't know what the boy's all about. Very close to being a fumble. I Did think. you think it was? No, I didn't think it was a fumble. I thought it was a correct call. His arm is going forward. He ducks the blitz here. They come with the safety blitz. You see right here, watch Jim duck. Kenny Houston goes over the top of him, comes up. And his arm will be going forward. He's still trying to throw the football. You see, he actually made a motion. No question about it. It wasn't his best motion, <laughs> but he saved a lot. Second down, 10. Kelly, Gray, the wide receivers. All right. He gets it off to Theotis Brown, and Theotis Brown doesn't get a lot on that. He's inside the 25 to the 24. Brad Dusick, last two years, has led the Redskins in tackles over there to make that stop. Joe Jones will come in now, along with Tony Peters, on an apparent passing situation, third and eight. Interesting call here. You know you're going to go for it on fourth down. Sometimes you can cross them up and go for a quick trap up the middle. Good point. We have a final now. Miami shutting out Baltimore. 19 seconds. Third down and eight, 555 left in the game. Hunt delivers the ball, and it's caught. A fine catch that time by Osborne, Richard Osborne. That's a first down to the 15-yard line. Boy, does he ever make a great catch here and a clutch catch because Kenny Houston is right with him. Good throw by Jim Hart. Just getting Zach coming right back, stepping up in the pocket, delivering the pass. Very accurate. Look at this. He could make a mistake with that one because Houston was in a direction where he could have made an interception. First catch of the year for Osborne. Back to throw again. Hard on first down. Delivers to Pat Tilly to five. Tilly is to the one. Pat Tilly to the one-yard line. And with 5-10, the Cardinals are right back in this one. Boy, what a good throw. You just have to admire the way he struggled throughout the afternoon. Had some passes dropped. But hanging tough right to the end again. Good accurate throw. That's why I think he's like ninth on the all-time list, or he will be as far as pass completions. He, he needed, needed 20 today. 20 today, and he's, he could be getting close. Cardinals now trying to take it in. Theotis Brown diving, and he's in for the touchdown. There's a flag down. Cardinals have been plagued with those penalties. Use it against. It's against the Redskins. They'll refuse that. 27. And all of a sudden now, it's a 27 to 20 game. Just over the top. They have no trouble when they get close. Having people that can leap like this. Big man leaps in for the touchdown. Oh, it's going to go down to the wire, isn't it? I tell you, you said earlier, I trailed in a game 21 what points in a situation like this and came back. 21 in the third we were down and came back, but uh, not so much in the fourth. And boy, they've got everything going their way right now. Little for the point after, a big point after, and he gets it. It's 27 to 21 with four minutes, 38 seconds left in this game. At the 14.54 mark of this game, the Redskins led it 27 to 7. Keeping our country beautiful and saving energy. Two good reasons why Alcoa supports aluminum can collections. Recycling saves 95% of the energy needed to make new metal from bauxite. Today, one out of four aluminum cans is recycled and used again. Tomorrow, maybe one out of three. Someday, maybe every one of them. We can't wait, we can't wait for tomorrow. Being a fashion editor, you learn to work with complete chaos. Everyone needs immediate answers. Every detail is important. It's taught me to think fast and trust my own judgment. It didn't take me long to decide I like colony. When I tried it, it tasted delightful. I could have checked with our food editor, but I was impressed with the way colony tastes. And who needs another opinion when you've got your own? Impress yourself with the taste of colony. Very concerned, Jack Pardee, his team, in the first play of the fourth quarter, led 27 to 7. They now lead 27 to 21 as they receive this kickoff with 4:38 left in the game. Back there's Ike Forte. He'll go into the end zone, and the Redskins will have it at the 20-yard line. And the defense now figuring they've got to shut this off in a hurry. They got to hold them early in this series. And a little pressure on the Redskins offense also now because. Uh, they haven't 
turn the thing over but one time today uh, on that it wasn't actually the offense that was on a punt return team and they can't afford to make a mistake a mistake right here would hurt them and so from the 20 yard line the skins aren't out of it yet they have to do something here or they're going to put their defense in a real bad situation Joe Theismann gives off to Malone and look at that reaction a man over there to make the stop Bob Pollard, it sure is, number 82, Bob Pollard. Good reaction by the defensive end. Amazing thing in professional football, even in college football, any level of it, how momentum changes around. You get inspired a little bit because your offensive team does something. The defense comes in and arises to the occasion. A loss of three, second and 13. The clock with four minutes. Both of these teams, by the way, have all three of their timeouts remaining. John Warren is flanked out along with two wide receivers. A give to Riggins. Riggins across the 20 to the 22. It's a long third down coming up. Eric Williams made the stop for St. Louis. And with 3.39, here is a big play in this football game. Harmon and Forte come in on a parent passing play. Riggins and Malone check out. The Cardinals make a lot of changes. Ron Yankowski, Roy Green is checking in. This is where they like to go, that favorite pattern of theirs, hooking Warren in the middle and getting the ball to either one of the backs, whoever comes open. Let's take a look. Third and nine. Heisman on the third and nine. Good pressure put on. He's trying to get rid of the ball. He does, but it stops the clock with 3.06. It's fourth down, and the Cardinals now are going to come away with excellent field position. Dawson and Pollard were really coming in after Theisman. Let's look at it again. Theisman had a lot of time to throw the football this time, but apparently nobody came open because watch him. He steps up through the pocket, good protection, and he gets away, but he throws the ball away right here. He just downs the ball, grounds it. Not a chance way though, huh? Yes, he did. Willard Harrell is back. The kick by Mike Bragg. Bragg with a beautiful kick. Harrell at the 39-yard line, trying to go wide, and he breaks one, two tackles to the 43-yard line. Adi Coleman made the stop, and now with 2.53 left, the Cardinals have the ball, a five-yard return after a 41-yard kick by Mike Bragg, and a game that just completely pivoted around in this fourth quarter. Seattle leading the Cleveland Browns 29 to 24. What a game they're having, huh? There's Bud Wilkinson. He has to be pleased with the way his team has stuck it in there. Stayed with it. Brown, Anderson, the running backs from the 44. Hart back to throw. Has time. He completes it to the 45-yard line to Osborne, the tight end. And he won't give up. And he's being roughed, roughed up a little bit over there by Ken Houston. That's a wrong place for Houston to try anything. <laughs> middle of that Cardinal bench. Gain of about two yards, and that's all. Second and eight. He was just wrestling with him, trying to get him down, and he had a big, strong man. He couldn't get him off his feet. I'll tell you, that Houston is something, isn't he? 11 straight years in the Pro Bowl. He's had one interception, and that one interception was the game against St. Louis, where he picked off a pass in the end zone. It's his, his 180th consecutive game that he's played. Look at this. Hart has completed seven of his last eight passes seven of his last eight. Second and eight from the 45 and a half yard line. Two, 44 left in the game. Complete over the middle. Osborne again to the 50 yard line. Mark Murphy made the stop. It's third down, but you know they'll go to a fourth down. Jim picked up uh, Kenny Houston coming on a blitz that time. He read it. He audible and just threw the little looky pattern to the tight end. They're in a four down drive. Get whole wheat Wheaties working for you. As for good nutrition, a Wheaties breakfast is hard to beat. You see, Wheaties is made from the whole kernel of wheat. You get not only the heart of the wheat, but the wheat germ and bran fiber, too. Don't shortchange your body. Get all the nutrition that comes from a good breakfast. Like a whole wheat Wheaties breakfast. Get the whole wheat working, working for you. Wheaties, 
the breakfast of champions. All right, let's go back and look at this remarkable catch by Pat Tilly. What a big catch. I don't know if he's made a bigger one, Gary, but an effort here. You see him right here. And again, look who's on the coverage, number 24. Jim Hart says, you may have gotten a couple, but I've gotten a couple on you too. Tilly, four catches, 66 yards. Hart has now hit nine of his last 10 passes. He gets to Otis Anderson. Anderson's got a block and gets out of bounds, stops the clock with 155. Brad Dusick made the tackle. Tilly took himself out of the game. As you mentioned, he may have shaken himself up trying to catch the ball, but he's back in there now. Thought Anderson was going to go inside this time. You see Dusick just stringing the play out. He really plays it well. Collins goes in on the block, but Dusick rolls off and knocks uh, Anderson out of bounds. Not to take anything away from Collins, but that is a patented play for Bob Young. He is an excellent pulling guard who hasn't been able to play today at all. Anderson, 105 yards for the day. You see the timeouts remaining. Hart. Otis Anderson, touchdown. Otis Anderson took it in. The Cardinals are going crazy. The whole bench is emptied. They've come out of the playing field. Neil Olkowitz was trying to defend on the play, and Anderson, who caught his first touchdown catch last week, has added his second. He had him single coverage this time. Boy, what a great throw Jimmy Hart makes here. Right over the top. Look at the coverage. That's how close it was for the touchdown. And now what a big, big point after this is. Look at Anderson spike it. He's got to get this one or it won't be all tied up. Little to kick. Whirly to hold. The kick by Little is off, and it's good. And the Cardinals have taken a one-point lead. 28-27, our score. Still 148 left in this football game. Our corporation had to have an insurance company that pays medical claims promptly, fairly, and courteously. Connecticut General really came through for us. Dental claim forms are a lot easier to fill out when they're in my language instead of insurance ease. And that's how Connecticut General comes through for me. Come in through for you. That's what CG people do. Call us. We'll come through for you, too. Well, there's the story. 148 left. You can see how excited they are. Jim Hart given a bear hug there by Terry Steve. But the way Mark Mosley can kick a field goal and the way the Redskins ran their two-minute offense earlier in this first half of play, they still have a lot yet to be decided. A long time to go. They used ten plays in that first half in uh, just a, about two minutes, so the uh, game's far from being over. Big plays have to be made. Also should mention the Redskins have three timeouts left. Little the kickoff with 148, a great cut from behind here by the Cardinals. Active by Forte. And picked up instead by Don Harris. And Harris returns it out to the 20-yard line. Our producer for this game has been Bob Rowe. Our director, Jim Silman. Thank you for the pictures. Yes, sir. Our associate producer from this Washington area, Ernie Bauer, Stan Ernie. Mitchell. I want to thank our spotter, Jason Strinsky, our stats man, Marty Aronoff, and what a job these two men have done. It's been an interesting game that's completely pivoted around here in the fourth quarter. 27 to 7, the Cardinals trailed at 14.54 to go in the fourth quarter. First down at the 20. Heisman back. And he's going to be down inside the 10 yard line. Excellent pressure put on that time by Mike Dawson. And you mentioned Dawson didn't have a sack prior to today. He has two today. Boy, what a big play he makes right here. I tell you something. Fighting over there. Terry Hermeling is not playing. Greg Dubonnet is in for him right now. Heisman throwing. He completes it up to Clarence Harmon of the 20. They're back to the original line of scrimmage now. And they have a third down coming up, and a timeout has been called. Washington uses the first of three timeouts. You see the time remaining. That sack was a very big sack because it took a lot of time, and of course, the Redskins are right back where they started that series. A third down, almost 11 yards to go. Sonny, this is the thing about football. Momentum, we always talk a lot about it, but never have I seen it switch any more than it has today. I haven't either, and uh, really, I know that you live in St. Louis and are going back there, and you're going to have to give that young man that played quarterback today 
please give him my regards because he had a heck of an afternoon to come back the way he did because he had was struggling at first. Well, Hart is 15 of 32 for 170 yards. He had, what, 10 yards in the first half? 10 yards, and he comes back in the second half and does a job when they're 21 down. Completed his last seven passes. And of course, that last one, the touchdown catch to Otis Anderson. Two timeouts remaining. From the 20-yard line, Ken Stone now comes in. They may have five defensive backs in. The 21-yard touchdown pass has been the difference in this game thus far. As Little Lynn gave him the advantage on the point after Feisman back to throw. Steps up, broken up, but it's still caught by Don Warren for a first down. Mark Arneson batted it out, but then Warren, who's played so well, came away with it. First down for Washington. What a big catch that is. What a big catch is right. Ball straight up in the air, and he comes down with it, used his height. They have another play called, and with a minute five now, we have a flag. Mike right, Dawson, what's this all about? Dawson getting get back on sides. I don't know who the play is going to be called on. It's going to be calling Dawson for not getting back, trying Over to use that again. Stay there. Well, yeah. It's kind of, right. Can you draw that ball off? Yeah. <laughs> Joseph, would you draw that ball off? <laughs> Encroachment on a defense, number 73. Let's go back to that previous catch by Don Warren. Boy, what a catch he makes here. The same pattern, hooking right in the middle of the field. The ball is thrown high. Look here, the ball goes straight up. What are you talking about? That thing could have come off and gone any place for an interception or anything. Mark Arneson played it as well as you can play it. First and five after the encroachment penalty. Number 39, Feisman being chased again. He got the pass off. It's going to put the helmet. Harmon to the 30. He's knocked out of bounds at the 25. And that is a remarkable play. What a great catch he makes. We've had some great plays. But right now, that was the biggest play of the ball game. I tell you, you know where they are right now. They're in field goal range of Mark Mosley. Under pressure, Thysman throws a perfect one. Didn't throw the ball any better. He keeps his balance on a low catch and goes down the sideline. Boy, what a catch by Harmon. We have a man shaken up for the Cardinals. That's Roger Worley. Worley is out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Well, I have said a lot about Harmon, but I don't think I've ever seen a more pressure-packed catch than he just made there. He has done very well for this Washington team. And Theismann, as you mentioned, he had everybody chasing him back there. He did. He was a, That was the last guy he wanted to go to, and he threw the ball off balance and made a perfect throw. Timeout call by St. Louis. It is Worley, though, that is down. That's Ken Stone with him. Roger getting up. I think he's going to be all right. That's good. I'd hate to have to take him out. I wonder if they'll leave him in here. Boy, that is, again, just showing you the kind of football we've had in this fourth quarter. Warren makes a great catch. Harmon makes a great catch. Tilly made a great catch. Otis catches a touchdown pass. They're just trying to top each other. But now they're in field goal range at this moment, regardless of what happens with 55 seconds, if they can hang on to the football. Now, with two timeouts left, the question you have is, do you play it conservatively now and just try to set up the field goal? With that type of kicker, you can do anything. You've got plenty of time. I knew after the kickoff, I mean, after the touchdown, the Cardinals scored, and I told you during the break that a minute 48 is a long time, the way they executed their two-minute offense, and they've come right back down the field now with the big plays. And good scoring range right now. As you see those stats on Theismann. Boy, what a day he has had. 16 of 26. First down at the 26. 55 seconds left. McDaniel and Bugs, the wide receivers. Theismann, he's going to throw it. They're throwing caution to the wind. Throws it up the field. Broke it up. And that is Worley, who was shaken up earlier. Now, do you think they just went after him because they thought he might have been a little bit uh, shaken and wouldn't react well? May have been, but I tell you, that's a dangerous throw oh. to throw the ball running to your left as a right-handed quarterback and throw the ball up softly. I'm One surprised. thing they want to avoid right here is an interception. I am surprised, Sonny, because when you have a man like Mosley, I wouldn't think you'd come out like that very often, but they tried it. Second and 10 from the 26. Thompson and Bugs, the wide receivers. That took only five seconds. 
What a game. 28-27, the Cardinals are the lead after they trail 27-7 after the first play of the fourth quarter. Weisman back again, throwing again, intended for Ricky Thompson, and boy, was Weisman hit. Weisman was bumped clear outside the 40-yard line by Mike Dawson. I get called the same play that time, didn't he? <laughs> Say one thing, they have a lot of confidence in their passing game. Now they come to a third and 10. 45 seconds left in the game. John McDaniel comes in. Ricky Thompson leaves. So they went at Parrish. Now they're going at Whirling. They're going right at the strengths of these two secondaries. Standing on the field before the game with Gary Parrish, he said, there's one man that scares me on the Washington Redskins. It can beat us. Mark Moser. Mark Moser. It may come to that, and it will come to that, if they don't get it here. Third and 10. And they're not going to get much. Good effort, though, by Ike Forte to the 21. And here they come. The issue to be decided by number three. Mark Mosley, who's hit two today, a 27 and 46 yards. He's 17 of 22 for the year. His longest, 53 yards. And Washington is going to take a timeout. They have one timeout remaining. And Mosley is going to have to wait. I'm surprised Washington called a timeout. You'd think maybe the Cardinals would to put some pressure on the skins. Mosley didn't like it, I don't think. I'm surprised, too, because after this field goal, a short amount of time, they will have uh, quite a bit of time left on the clock. Okay, well, with 40 seconds left, the Cardinals are going to put on all the pressure they can. If you were going to call a timeout, Gary, I would have thought you'd have used up your 30-second clock and run it down to about five seconds and then call the timeout taking more time off the clock. This crowd on its feet. This will be a 39-yard field goal attempt. Eisman to hold. Mosley's 5 of 8 between the 40 and 50-yard line, but this is closer. Bad snap, and the kick is good. The ball had to be placed in a hurry by Theismann, but he got it done, and Mosley is as good as anybody that's ever kicked in this game. Drilled it. And with 36 seconds left, a 39-yard field goal has given the Redskins a 30-28 to 28 lead. Boy, Bison really did a job on that snap. Great pressure kick, great pressure kick. You can say it all the time. He's the best in football. Everybody says it. Everybody believes it. Just as accurate as anybody I've ever seen kick the football. You know, if you look at the Cardinals this year, Sonny, they lost by one point to Dallas. They lost by two points to Pittsburgh. They've lost by four points to Philadelphia, and here now they're down by two. And you think about how their season could have been. Stranger things have happened with 36 seconds. Left. Well, all right, we'll see. <laughs> As Harold and Green go back. Mosley, there's Bud Wilkinson. But I have to take my hat off to this Cardinal team for the way they came back in this fourth quarter. Two. Great uh, two-minute drives by the Redskins also. You know, they got one before the half, and they come right back here with a minute 48 and go down and get the field goal. You know, it's interesting to me. Mosley last week had his field goal string broken at 11 straight games with at least one field goal. He comes back here today, three for three. 46-27 and the big one, 39 yards out. And what a play by Clarence Harmon, huh? The big oh, catch that he boy. made. So many big plays in this fourth quarter by both sides. Hart will come in, and he has hit his last seven in a row, but he's going to have his work cut out for him. And Mosley doesn't kick all that deep, so they may have good field position. Now he's going to squib one. Johnny Fairfield. Fairfield's going to carry it. Fairfield's... No, wait a minute. That's bad, Ronnie. That was the Harrell. Willard Harrell's got some running room, and he gets out of bounds, and they have good field position at the 47. That was Favron. I stand corrected, not Fairfield. He got it off to Harrell, a very alert play by Favron. I don't know if you like those linebackers coming up with footballs and then lateraling the thing, but it worked. It did work. Now that's a different story. You have the ball at the 48-yard line with 27 seconds. What is the range of Steve Little? 51 is the longest he's kicked. Hart. Boy, I've never seen so much football packed into 15 minutes as we've had here today. Gray, Tilly, split out. 27 seconds left in the game. Hart back. 
protection is there. He throws complete to Otis Anderson. He gets out of bounds at the 45. 21 seconds. They don't have enough time to throw those kind of patterns, though, do they? Bonnie yes. Coleman over there. If you can throw two more of them, just like that one, you may have a few seconds left on the clock for, for a long field goal attempt. Cardinals have two timeouts left. And so from the 45, second down now, and still two yards to go, almost three. Joe Jones comes out of there. Carl Lorch replaces him. Hart's hit eight in a row. Hart throwing again, broken up. Head to receiver Anderson, and he thought he might have been interfered with. Monty Coleman defending on the play. Third down coming up. That stops the clock with 16 seconds. That one hurt. Yep. Now they, what can they do? Can they go one more sideline, or they have to go deep and just go for it all here pretty quick? No, they can, they can throw the ball. Uh, intermediate tight pass. Gary, with some type of crossing pattern where you'd like to find Mel Gray coming across there in some right. form. Get the ball to him down around the 20-yard line, and you got a shot. Lavender picks up Gray at the bottom of the screen. Hard back. Third and three. And he's trying to get Osborne. Trying to come up with the interception was Tony Peters. So it's fourth down, and nine seconds remain. You see the time remaining. Hart is 16 of 35 for 178 yards. Well, we're down to one play, huh? I think you're right. One play. The old, uh, what are they called? The Big Ben play? That's what Atlanta calls it, where they throw it up, somebody tips it to someone else. New Orleans can tell you about that one. The thing is, you need a pass interference call, some type of defensive penalty to stop the clock. This may be the last play in this game. Broken up. Gary Buck, 65, broken up. And with that play, the Cardinals' hopes have come to an end. As the Washington Redskins are alive and well in this NFC Eastern Division chase. A big, big win for Washington, who thought they had it, then had it almost get away from them. And then Mark Mosley with the field goal. That's a real character test for a team, isn't it? Well, I tell you, to come back uh, the way they did there in the last minute, you have to admire the effort. Both teams, tough game for either team to lose. Let me take my hat off, though, to number 17, Jim Hart. I'm sure a lot of people watching this telecast, sitting at home in the comfort of their living room, couldn't figure out why Bud Wilkinson didn't get him out of there. He knew why they weren't out of the game. And Jim almost pulled this one out. Weisman drops on it. The Cardinals will let it tick away. And this game is over. As Feisman goes away with the football, the Washington Redskins are now 7-4 and four for the year. They still are in the chase for that NFC Eastern Division title. George went whitewater expeditionist. You know what he does for excitement? I collect stamps. For me, collecting U.S. commemoratives is a special kind of thrill. They honor our country's great people, important events, and natural beauties. Every stamp is a little piece of America. And stamp collecting is one adventure I can share with my son. Start your collection with the Summer Olympic Block of Four at your post office now. 30 to 28 the final. And for the seventh time in the last eight games, the Redskins have defeated the Cardinals. Great football game. I enjoyed it. it uh... I thought they played well under the conditions. The Cardinals coming back the way they did. Washington with a final drive and the field goal by Mosley. Well, we'll be in Philadelphia next week. The Cardinals against the Eagles, and I'm sure the Eagles are very much aware of how tough it's going to be for them after watching this one today. Let's take, let's take a look at the winning point right here. Mark Mosley, considered the best in football, and you see right here, he doesn't get this ball up like he normally does. I think the snap was a little low to Theismann, but you see how accurate that ball is. Is that in the middle or is it in the middle? Three for three today, and that one of 39 yards out. So the final score, 30 to 28. We'll be back with more from RFK Stadium in just a moment. 